what's your favorite anime series of all time? Let yeah, me tell you something yeah. about cocaine. Uh, how much? <laughs> that's not who I am. This is who I am. This is who I've always been, and I'm finally able to accept that this is who I am. I got picked on for watching anime. This is the, the one place I can be myself without having to be judged for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or be be truly an authentic expression of myself. And these anime watchers today don't know how lucky they have it. Mommy, if you're watching this, please me. Whoa. <laughs> like, everyone full of shit. Mm, got a porta potty at an ACO. <laughs> Does she voice Frieza? She's the voice of Frieza. What the? F yeah. And she did your song? Yeah. How? How'd y'all come into contact? So... Welcome in, everyone. MJ38 Show, episode number 65. We're 65 deep in this thing. We keep on moving. We keep on pushing. Thank you again for joining us. It's uh, Justin with my co-host, Mr. Matthew, MJ38. And we have a special guest for us this evening as well, Mr. Deacon Rap, live out of San Antonio, the nerdiest rapper in the game, Big Booty Daddy, bring it on over. Keep on going. Keep climbing. Green Ranger in the flesh, in the suit. The suits, the flesh is in the suit, and the suit and the flesh are in our chair, in our studio. We're rocking. Deacon Raps, how you doing, man? Hey, guys, do you hear that noise? No, you hear something? That's the sound of the people getting out of their seats because finally Deacon Rap has come back to the MJ38 podcast. Actually, that's a lie. I've never been here, but I got here as soon as I could. It's just the <laughs> mail! What Deacon Rap is cooking. <laughs> Let him know. Let him know. Damn, man, son, where'd you find that? <laughs> Let's go. That's an intro right there, man. Welcome to the pod. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Of course, man. Yeah, that, that, you had me going. I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> Is there an audio problem? <laughs> what's going on? But now we rock it, man. Hell yeah. What's going on, Deacon? I think we've, we've crossed paths before. We, are, we also make music here in San Antonio, but I think because of that, we had crossed paths years ago. I think Matthew was saying at Limelight. Potentially, I think it was Limelight. There Dude, was a while. Limelight was so long ago. I, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think I was like twenty three, so like seven years ago. Uh, no, it probably like five. No, oh god, yeah, it could have been seven years ago. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah I remember right. I started doing Lime, uh, doing their open mic in like 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Because we Us we started too. for like 2017, 2018 is when we started frequenting like Bottom Bracket, Limelight, Frankie D's. What else? Spots like that, you know. What I'm on a bracket, they, they closed down. Oh yeah, there. they closed down. <laughs> yeah, what they was ended up the closing other one? down. Vin oh, Ventura, Ventura, Ventura. That was another one we went to. Also closed down. Yeah, I think it, it re oh, rebranded, yeah. renamed. A I'm not gonna bar. lie, I don't like the new owner. Oh, really? Uh, well, yeah, I haven't met him. We don't have to, but why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just because uh, I really like the previous owner. Yeah. yeah. The previous Somebody's... owner will post about him from time to time, and it's like. Oh, no, I'm going to support the previous owner because the previous owner was so nice. Gotcha. Yeah, I believe his name was uh, Michael. Uh, he's yeah. He's in MJ and the Foxes. Mm -hmm. Or Michael. Michael J and the Foxes. And, you know, that dude was so nice. Like, his girlfriend cosplayed and I see her convention. So really? it's like, I can't see that guy really, like, just talking shit about somebody randomly. Uh-huh. Like, he probably has a reason for saying what he says. Gotcha. So you're saying that there was like some beef between like the new owner and the previous owner? Oh, I don't know. I don't really follow it. I just see posts from random time to time. Oh, uh, yeah. There's posts and some stuff. Talking smack. Yeah. But if it was like, I'm going to say at least two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't, I don't really, I don't really know the full story. I'm just like, oh, so this is what's going on. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm with you. That's kind of what we do on the internet, right? Just keep a pulse. Oh on yeah, what's that, happening. that's what yeah. we do on the internet all the time. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's it. like you'd be surprised how many people are just guilty by default and not really guilty. Yeah, well, you gotta. We're mm. kind of just taking sides, if so, especially if someone's beefing. It's like, what happened there? What happened there? What'd they say? Nah, man, I'm with this guy. How did he respond? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah what did he say? And how did he respond? Yeah, we're also on the outside looking in. You know, who knows the truth of what's going on. Well, yeah, it's just Behind like the, the Diddy situation. Nobody, right. nobody knew that. Oh, a lot of these like young people are acting out because this is what's going on. Like Britney Spears shaving her head. Oh, that was going mm. on. Um, Amanda Bynes. Uh, freaking even Justin Bieber. It's like Cyrus. we yeah. owe sixteen-year-old Justin Bieber an apology for real, for real. <laughs> Biebs, if you're if you're watching this, 
We're sorry. My heart goes out. My heart's <laughs> on my sleeve, but actually it's on my shirt and it goes out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. If you're, okay, I guess one thing we have to address, if you're not, if you're not watching, you're just listening. But if you are watching, we got full on suits, suited hero in the stew, green rangered up. We're going to talk about that for sure. So I guess what did, yeah, how did this, a couple questions. Mm-hmm. How long you been, <laughs> how long you been doing music? And then what, what kind of, why did you start to do music? Yeah, it's Deacon Raps. But the Power Ranger, it throws me off because it's like, I'm not sure. Okay. So um, when I was 10 years old, I discovered MTV's morning music videos. Yeah. And two weeks later, I discovered 8 Mile. And after watching 8 Mile for the first time, I got this idea in my head that this is what I was born to do. Yeah. So I've been doing that since I was 10 years old. And around 2013, um, Ice Cube once said... Hip hop is a reflection of your reality, and you know a lot of hip hop is like you know gangs and drugs and women, and that's just not my reality. My mm-hmm. reality is like, oh, I love playing video games and playing Yu Gi Oh and watching Power Rangers. So around 2013, I started you know making nerdy music and cosplaying when performing, and during the pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, we're uh, I've always been like body conscious. And during the pandemic, it's like, oh, I got an extra fifteen hundred bucks, and according to uh, social media, I'm we're all gonna die. Mm-hmm. So before that happened, let me do the one thing I want, one costume I've always wanted, which is the White Ranger. Uh-huh. And after putting it on for the first time in my life, I'm like, oh, damn, I'm a good looking guy. Let's go. And it took tight spandex for me to say that. <laughs> okay. So. Then after being a White Ranger for a while, I upgraded to the Green Ranger. I upgraded to the Red Ranger. I'm currently in the middle of uh, putting two or three other Ranger suits together. And, you know, Power Rangers became so big to me because in 2020, I got to meet Jason David Frank, who played the White and Green Ranger. Oh, okay. He He played both? Yeah. So this is the story. He played the Green Ranger, right? Got it. But the Green Ranger's power is limited by the, the evil candle. Once the evil candle runs out, there's no more no more morphing, no more Green Ranger power. Hmm. And uh, and the more the candle burns out, the weaker he becomes. Got it. So Zordon sent him on a mission to find the White Beacon of Hope. And when he found the White Beacon of Hope, according to the comic books, he passed the test and they granted him the power of the White Ranger. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So he's both. Yeah, he's both. And, and the White yeah. Ranger's like a super, he's just like an elevated version of the Green Ranger suit, like more powers or what's that? Yes. He was able to live on because like the Green Ranger has to like die at some point. So in the, in the Sentai or the Japanese version, the Green Ranger does die. Hmm. But, in my, but in the American version, oh, we got to sell more toys. So once, we th- once uh, the toys really slow down from Mighty Morphin figures, Let's come up with some story how they got to become different rangers. So after Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed basically destroyed the command center, they retrieved the, uh, the Zeo crystal and uh, they get transported down to the basement of the command center where, oh, here's another command center that's downstairs in the basement. And instead of having the power of dinosaurs and spirit animals, we're going to have the power of shapes. So Tommy becomes the Red Zeo Ranger with the power of the star. The Pink Ranger had the power of the circle. You, you see, you get my dress. What? Yeah. <laughs> so and then this... after that, they have to uh, up, they have to upgrade their power to stop um, the new villain Divatox. And now we're gonna have the power of Turbo. And instead of having like you know, uh, robot shape thingies, we're gonna have cars to turn into robots. Hmm. It's like a rebranding or kind of like a, yeah. a slight change. And Tommy became the Red Ranger again. And then halfway through the series, him and his friends graduate high school and they select a new team to take on the role of the Turbo Rangers. And the lore goes on from there. That's crazy. So, so you're, you're pretty tapped into the, like, the original comic books or where did you pick up like the Power Ranger? Uh, when I was a kid, I had Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on VHS. Got it. And I had Turbo Power Rangers on VHS, but I never really watched the show. And then around 2001, we finally got cable, and I discovered Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, mm. which is which honestly, and here's the next thing: Lightspeed Rescue is the most realistic Power Rangers ever. Okay, 
So the government create Power Ranger Morphers, right? Love it. Are we going to get some teenagers who know how to fight? No. Like the Red Ranger is a fireman, right? Mm. And the Blue Ranger, he's a animal trainer at SeaWorld. The Green Ranger, he's a, he's a sky cowboy. He does a lot of tricks with planes. Uh, the Pink Ranger is an EMS, ner- uh, EMS person with the ambulance. Mm-hmm. In the first episode, they're recruited, right? And there's folders. Uh, the government's been keeping track of them. And when you read the Red Ranger's folder, he was, uh, he was like, uh, I believe, a special forces in the Army. If you read the Blue Ranger's folder, he was a Navy SEAL. And it's like, oh, these are ex-military guys that are the badasses of the badasses. So this makes more sense mm-hmm. of this is who we want to be, Power Rangers. Not a bunch of kids who just know yeah. how to do karate chops. <laughs> so you see, like, says there's the different series or different, like, veins yeah. and avenues. It's kind of like Pokemon. It's like this is different, different, like, stories of Pokemon or different, like, titles they put on the show to have a different kind of setting. Uh, it's more of, it's just, Pokemon is just copy, paste, and repeat. Mm-hmm. Where at Power Rangers, it's a uh, copy paste and let's just um, at- tweak it a little bit so it doesn't look like we actually copied. Mm-hmm. Like in Lightspeed Red, you like I just said, they're ex military and like one of them's a fireman, one of them's a sea world, one of them's an EMS. Uh, in Time Force, they're police from the year 3000. And Wild Force, they have spirit animals and the Red Ranger is basically Tarzan. And um, SPD. They're cops in space in the year 2025. Hmm, that's and um, let's see what else. In RPM, they're in a post apocalypse, and it yeah, basically. A closer. They're in the post apocalypse, and it's basically Mad Max out there. Hmm. And you see what I'm going with. There's always a different theme. And yeah, then space. Yeah. Space. The space rangers. Yes. Andros is an alien. The rest of them are human. And Andros is trying to find his sister. And we're going all through the galaxy to find her. <clears throat> Lost Galaxy is practically on a whole nother planet. That's nope. why it's called Lost Galaxy. We, ha- we have a space force, like, in our government. We yeah. A, right. Do you know about this? <laughs> I'm well aware of the space force. I don't exactly know what they do. I'm not knowledgeable to, like... Uh, yeah, I, don't I, mean, I don't think anybody knows what I'm, they do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, part of the, that's part of the allure. That's part of what they do. You know, <laughs> the, no one knows the, what they the do. Air Force was originally, was originally doing the space program, and then NASA came out, and it's like... Hey guys, I know you're studying all the space stuff, but the government decided the Air Force is no longer going to be affiliated with space travel. They're going to give it to NASA. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Air Force split off from that, so it was. But now there's the Space Force, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Who knows what the hell they're doing? I guess he's he's looking it up. But what's so so with all the with all the variability? Like, what's the amongst like the the people who are tapped in to Power Rangers, what's like the common conception about like what's the best version and what's like the worst version? Like what do the people, what do the people love? Um, everybody loved different ones. Like uh-huh. for me, my favorite is Back to Back, Lightspeed Rescue, and Time Force. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are gonna say it's Mighty Morphin. Some people are gonna say Cosmic Fury. I think we can all agree that if we all had to pick one for everyone to agree on, yeah. I'm gonna go with Dino Thunder. Dino Thunder. Dino Thunder was just flawless and perfect. Okay. Yeah. Where did that fall? Like, was that one of the earlier ones, or was it like a later rendition? Uh, it's like a, I believe the tenth iteration. Tenth. And basically, we're gonna have the power of dinosaurs again, and we're gonna have a lot of themes from Jurassic Park. And Tommy the Green Ranger comes back as a mentor, and he becomes the Black Ranger. Okay, let's hoop. My boy's hooping. Yeah, this is my one of my favorite scenes. Is that because. Tommy basically becomes a paleontologist, and while they're studying the dino gems and all the evil that's going on in the city, um, he takes on a job as the high school science teacher. So him and the students, because the students are Power Rangers, uh, he discovered that, oh, the principal is secretly the villain we've all been searching for. Oh, wow. And so Tommy and the principal start you know, fighting in front of the flagpole, and they don't hear the bell ring. So imagine you, uh, you're in high school, class is over, you go outside, and the principal and everyone's favorite science teacher are karate kicking each other at the flagpole, <laughs> and it takes them too long to realize that all the students are watching. Mm-hmm. Cover's blown. No, no, the cover didn't get blown because mm-hmm. they never exposed themselves because Tommy can't tell everybody that, oh, Principal Randall is secretly the villain we've been looking for, and Principal Randall can't expose herself because... 
she still need to be at the school and keep her identity. And live the stay normal cl- life. And stay, no, stay close to the Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep them on their grasp. Yeah. Love it. And the villain, Let's the go. main villain... Metagog, who talk like that. I'm going to punish you for not destroying the Power Rangers. Let's go. So he's a good villain? He's a good villain? Oh, yeah. He would. He was very menacing. He had the voice. He had the motions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and according to my girlfriend, the guy who plays him is hot. I think my girlfriend's in the dad's. I don't know. That's a plus. I guess, I guess it's a plus. Who's not? Yeah. Who's Again, not? I don't know. I can't speak for yeah. that. We all love yeah, a father yeah, figure. Can't speak to it. But what I, what I am going to ask is, were they high schoolers, the Power Rangers, in this? Yeah. The Power Rangers are always high schoolers. and um, Except the military ones. Yeah. Except, well, some of them are adults. Some of them are just young adults. And um, like Merrick and Wild Force. You know, as a kid, I thought, oh, this guy got to be like 25. Whereas I watch as an adult, I see the the wrinkles around his eyes. I'm like, dude, what are you, like 40? What the He's hell? closer to 40. <laughs> Poor training. So whole dynamic kid. changes. Yeah. <laughs> the it, now it's in high stressed. definition and everything, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I feel the same with Tommy because, like, when you watch him in um, and Monty Morphin when he's the Green Ranger, it's like, oh, yeah, you can pass for a 17-year-old. But by the end of um, uh, Turbo, it's like, Dude, you're like you're obviously thirty now. Like you're big, you're jacked, you got mm. the long, flushes hair. Yeah, Dude, like that always happens, or that happens. That's like a thing we have to contend with. I was, about to, say, I was about to say it happens so bad in Harry, in Harry Potter, the, Game of Thrones. It's like, like you come back in next season, they're like, oh my god, they're like an adult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a kid because yeah, and sometimes it'll get delayed, like the recording or the capturing of the content of the show or whatever. Like it takes time, it takes time to make the script and capture it all. Dude, the end of Harry Potter when they're traveling through the desert and he's like fucking just not a kid anymore. You know? <laughs> he's like 24. <laughs> yeah. Portraying like a 16, 17 year old. Yeah, like a senior in high school, you know. Uh-huh. And that that just got so tough for me to watch because it was like I had, you know, read the books and it just felt so far from where they were at. Mm-hmm. I'd love to take a moment just right here because take I've it. been meaning to talk on the podcast about how I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty positive the woman, the actress that played... Professor McGonagall mm-hmm. in the Harry Potter series. Mm-hmm. I think she passed away last week. She did. Oh, really? McGonagall. Damn. Did, yeah, McGonagall. Um, did you know that while she was battling cancer, she was still filming Harry Potter? Really? Yeah, I she was no that idea. dedicated to the character. Yes. That's that's respect. That's Dude, respect. That, that's going out for a real one. That scene when like you know Harry gets like sorted into Gryffindor. And then he has to like, go to her class for transfigurations or no, it's not. I forget what she teaches. Like first year? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's yeah, like I one of the first say. scenes. Yeah. And and they walk into her class and she's just all fucking like kind of like very like a witch. You know what I'm saying? And then <laughs> walks like kind of menacingly. And like, I just remember being so gripped by that as a kid being so like, this is crazy. She was phenomenal, especially in its time. Like, watching mm-hmm. that movie in 2006 or whatever. 2002. 2002. Mind-blowing performance. <laughs> Mind-blowing. The effect when she's a cat and then she transforms, that, yeah. that effect alone. But, like... For the time, yeah, being in 2002, seeing that shit, it was like, what? <laughs> I was just like, but it, it was mind-blowing, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. To have yeah. the book come to life. And my, one of my favorite moments with uh, McGonagall is when uh, Professor Umbridge is making the kids write... And then it gets etched into their hand yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then McGonagall is so sassy with her. Like, they are my students and I will not teach them yada yada. And it's like, oh, damn, you just shut her <laughs> down. Yeah. <laughs> Meet me at the room. Yeah. <laughs> she was the stuffed her. She was the wizard, the wizard's hero, the people's hero. Yeah. Wizard's hero. People's champ. Yeah. People's champ. <laughs> people's champ. The wizard's champ. <laughs> she was one of, awesome. One of the most real moments from uh, Harry Potter, out of all Harry Potter, is Prisoner of Azkaban, where they're, where they're with the uh, Boggart, and uh, Professor Loomis asked Neville, what the thing you're most afraid of? Professor Snape. <laughs> and everyone laughed, but it's like, oh no, he, you're good to fear Professor Snape. Yeah, right, because he was like a bad guy, right? Like he a, wasn't a bad guy. You're right, you're right. He was right. a double agent. Yeah, yeah he was, a, he was right. like a triple agent. 
Yeah. Yeah, he right. was he was going in. Ultimately, he was a super complex character. Ultimately, his motivation was purely based on his love for Lily, like everything. Yeah. Like he he would flip either way if it did was you know that, benefit Did of you know that Harry had Lily's eyes? Yeah. Right? Because so he says it a bunch of times. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 <laughs> all the time. Yeah. yeah. No. Super common reference point. But when I saw that she passed away, I thought to my... First of all, I was horrified. Like, I felt like it was like someone I knew passed away. Yeah, you know? that's sad. I was like, oh, damn. I got sad, dude. Mm-hmm. And there was... Did you see... Well, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, he canceled the rest of his tour because he is... I don't know. He said he was, had to go to the hospital. He said he's really sick. What? And he appreciates some privacy, and he's like terribly, terribly sorry, but he can't. He can't do the rest of the tour. Yeah, he was. I, I remember seeing some promotion for that tour, but he's canceled. Called it off now. Yeah, I think he did like four dates of his like twenty date nationwide tour, uh-huh. and he was on like the North American leg of it or whatever. And uh, yeah, had to cancel the whole thing. What the and hell? then he just said like appreciated privacy, but like he had to go to the hospital, and he's like recovering from something really bad. I don't know. And then, you know, I had someone else, this guy I played basketball with, this older gentleman, he's 40, 50 years old. He was telling me that I was, like, leaving while he was coming in. And I was just like, sorry, man, I'm missing you today, but, you know, take care. Good to see you always. He's like, yeah, man, hey, I just want to say I'm going in for a cancer treatment that uh, it's, like, really bad. You know, I found out I got really bad cancer. So I said a prayer for me. I was like, holy shit, bro. This guy's, like, you know, telling me about it. He's, like, tearing up a little bit. I was like, fuck, man. Damn. I know, man. So then when she passed away, I was just like, it's so it's such a real thing. First of all, death is such a real thing, right? Health. Right? Mm-hmm. Just fuck Health and lack thereof are both very real things. We're just all having to deal with that constraint. But also, she was incredible. She was fire, dude. That series when I was a kid, like, she brought to life something that, like, molded me. Like, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For some people, like, maybe Narnia was like that for them or, like... Uh, My brother, Nicholas, he loved Fast and Furious. So, like, whenever Paul Walker died, he was like, oh. And, like, hit him, you know what I'm saying? I like, can't this, imagine, Right? He, he, he watched it a hundred times, you know? Yeah. Her that type per- of shit. Her performance, like, changed the lives of so many people just through art, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I just want to bring it up on the podcast and be like... Shout out, McGonagall. Pour one out. We lost Pouring everyone. out from a god. Say a prayer for Childish Gambino, too. Jeez. Yeah, Donald Glover, dude. That's crazy. That's scary. Yeah. Didn't mean to serve too far from the Power Rangers. So we got <laughs> we got into talking about Harry Potter and stuff. So you started music at 10. Mm-hmm. Had a musical inkling. And I love that you had the... Because uh, I've, I've empathized with the same sort of feeling where you have like a... It's like, I feel called to this. Like, I want to do this thing. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. You, you, it's not... It's well, not, well, not only that, but it's like, you know, genetically... I would bound to do music anyway. You think so? My great great grandfather uh, played uh, guitar in the uh, Civil War. What? Um, my grandmother, she was a country singer. My dad and my uncle played in a country band. Hmm. Uh, my two brothers were in a rock band, and um, even on my mother's side, there were a couple mariachis. So it's like I would, I'm you no know, genetically, I'm supposed to do music. It's, it's like in your blood. No escaping it. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I, I kind of felt the same way because like, both my grandparents did choir. Like they were singers. Yeah, because like um, like uh, like my nephew Dak, um, he uh, he's not the musical person, but when it comes to working out, he's so artistic with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. whenever you see him work out, you know, I picture Arnold Schwarzenegger when he says. Whenever I work out, I look in the mirror and I, I you got to look at your body like a piece of art. Maybe my <laughs> my arms are too bigger than my lats. My lats are bigger than this. I got to work on my lats to make them as big as this. You see what I mean? The so, balance of proportions, the, the art. The balance of proportion, the art. Mm. Get to the gym now. I <laughs> knew exactly. He's like, I know the quote. I'm right there. <laughs> I, I feel I, you. I say that shit every day. I feel that. That was gas. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love working out for that same reason. Or it's like I think, but I think there's something in life that does that for you, for everyone. I think ideally, yeah, ultimately, the, everyone has something calling them out, pulling them towards something. The next step presents itself. Mm-hmm. It's always like. It's fun to just you don't sometimes you don't even have to make decisions. I just have to like become aware of the situation and then the next decision like de- is decided itself. I just like follow the the thing that's happening, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, so when did you start rec- like recording music for uh, in, in this in 2014? Genre? Um uh my brother had a studio and you know, I started recording professionally with him in 2014. Nice. And then I would just watch him do production for like years. And now I do my own music production, and Sweet. I have no formal training. All I know is just from watching him for so many years. Yeah, yeah, it's picking it up, picking yeah. it up as you go. Yeah, and it's like, uh, 
How should I put this? And it's like, it's weird. It's like, um, there'll be like times where I'm like doing something. I'm like, you know, like with a Logic Pro and I'm just like, wait, how did I do that? How did I know to do that? Hmm. And it's like, oh, it's just from watching Nick the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. There's some sort of, I think there's also a form of like you have the eye for it or you have the ear for it. I think some, some, some of that kind of plays into, and that might come from like genetics or something. Yeah. But I do feel like sometimes you, you'll just like, we'll be in the studio and then uh, the either Nick or Ace or someone will be producing the beat or doing whatever and like I'll be listening and sometimes I'll be like can you turn that down or like can you can you move that over a little bit it's like it doesn't sound it's not it's not right you know and like yeah, I think so. that comes from just like having an ear for it or having an eye for it like design or architecture or whatever that's very true I think someone yeah I think that comes from that same place of whatever you're kind of dealt you know it's like kind of random whatever your genetic makeup is or whatever your ancestral line whatever they were good at whatever they developed a high skill in or did spend a lot of time doing you might have some rep some kind of like a natural predisposition yeah yeah a little residual effects of that all that training and all that time task doing it's like it's it's in our it's in our it's in our ears it's in our eyes you know what i'm saying it's Very crazy what we so. inherit very much so. So that's awesome. They have like a musical background with your family and your brothers, like they, so they produce and make music as well? Oh, no, just one of them. Um, okay. My brother, um, you know him, his name is Nick. He was on the show like a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's your brother? Yeah. Nick Shan? Yeah, Nick Shan's my big brother, yeah. Hey, let's go. Shout out. No way, Didn't even bro. know you had the Shan blood in you. <laughs> oh, let's. No, yeah, Nick is uh, my brother. Um... That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I had no idea. So... So for everybody watching, without Nick Shan, there is no Deacon rap. Yeah, so he was helping. He was the one who was helping you uh, at the beginning produce the music and stuff. Yeah, he was just recording me, and after watching him for so many years, because I recorded with him uh, consistently from like fourteen till I'm gonna say right after the pandemic mm-hmm. or during the pandemic, and then about six months ago, I built my own studio. Hell yes, dude. Let's go. Nice. That's awesome. So yeah, you're just making your own beats and doing the audio, the mixing and the engineering oh, as yeah. well? Very yeah, doing everything. Let's go. Let's go. So how's the yeah, how's the music? I guess so you started recording back in around twenty fourteen ish, right? So yeah. it's, it's been like ten years, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I've seen also we we're going through some of your stuff, I was listening to some of your stuff on Spotify. And uh, but I also saw some of the clips you were sending of like performances and shows and you were yeah. doing like conventions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like well, what's that like? Or how'd you get into that into that roadway? So when I went to middle school, this girl I had a crush on was like, asked me to go to an uh, hang out with her at an anime convention. Okay. And, you know, I'm in eighth grade. I don't know what an anime convention is. I'm just like, oh, my God, the girl I like in anime club at school wants me to hang out with her outside of school? What? Oh, my God, this is so awesome, right? That's a W. That's, that's a, a W that's right a there. That's a dub. And this event happened to be called San Japan. Okay, San Antonio, Japan. Yes. San Antonio, Japan, yeah. I got it. And um, unfortunately, her mom wasn't able to take her. Oh. So here I am at this anime convention by myself. Damn it. <laughs> I know, right? But Blessing in disguise. Dude, that's I, classic eighth grade shenanigans. That's classic silver lining shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is guaranteed to happen to you in middle school at least once. So here I am, you know, at this anime convention for the first time in my life, I accept myself for who I am. You know, because prior to this anime convention... Um, I don't really have many pictures of me in middle school because my dad would, didn't like the way I dressed. But you guys ever see Soul Plane? Soul Plane. Yeah. Has uh, Snoop Dogg in it? Yeah. Whenever people ask me for my awkward middle school photos, I just show them the white kid from Soul Plane. Because like, <laughs> I had a grill. I had a do-rag. I had my dad buying me Jordans. And after that, um, that first anime convention, I'm like, what am I doing? This isn't who I am. Dad, I don't need you to buy me the new Jordans. Like, I'm I'm done. That's not who I am. This is who I am. This is who I've always been, and I'm finally able to accept that this is who I am. You just, like, felt that in the convention? Just, like, walking around oh, being yeah, the people? Oh, yeah, because I got, I got picked on for watching anime uh-huh. and still liking Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! while we were in middle school. And here I am around 3,000 people just like me, and they're all older than me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like, this is the... I felt like, you know... This is who. This is the, the one place I can be myself without having to be judged for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or be be truly an authentic expression of myself. And these anime watchers today don't know how lucky they have it. You mm-hmm. go to any store, mm-hmm. there's anime everywhere. You it, don't know how good you have it. It's huge now. It's huge. The last 10, 15 years, huge. And I, and I know where Inch. this all started. Where? In 2017, Michael B. Jordan said that he watched Naruto. 
And then all the other celebrities started coming out with like Jamie Lee Curtis came out saying that she watches One Piece. And this is and Kim Kardashian retweeted a picture of Zero Two from Darling in the Franks. And on the Kim Kardashian one, I'm like, you don't really watch this. You are just tapping on a trend. You're hopping into the trend. Yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and then Meg Thee Stallion. Uh, she blew up because of uh, My Hero Academia cosplay. Really? Yeah. You uh, don't like realize a, that. I guess it has, so it was like a, like a picture or a costume that she wore? Or yeah, video? it was uh, Todoroki from uh, My Hero Academia. Okay. And then she does uh, then like... You pull it up? Con- yeah, we can. What's it called? Meg the, it. Meg the Stallion what? Uh, can I type it? It's uh Yes, sir. I believe it's... Here, hold on. This will happen. It's, uh, it's hilarious that there was no, like no, a... No, no, don't type cosplay. Don't type cosplay. Oh, okay, never mind. It's uh, the second one. This one? Yeah. Let's check That's it. a cosplay she blew up with. Okay, I don't remember seeing that trend everywhere. Here we go. And it's a character from a cosplay or from a... What, what show is it from? It's from My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia. She's or I call it Academia, but... You know, <laughs> that's how I think it's pronounced. Academia. Academia. Is it academia? No, just because the way it's spelled, I would think it's academia. But yeah, um, I remember so, seeing that cosplay trend everywhere. How long ago was that? Does it say? 2017, 2018. Was this, it was a trend before she did it, or did she make it a trend? Uh, that bit, That's kind of how she blew up. Oh, it was like a, one, of her, one of the early early parts. Yeah, I guess because when, 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 did, when did she start getting popularized? 2017, 2018. Yeah, because I don't think I was listening to Meg Thee Stallion much before COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it was Saltgrass there. Yeah, yeah, she really had a song with much. Beyonce yeah, called yeah. Rat, uh, well, that Savage. That. I mean, she, That's what it was. And in one of the promotional pictures, people drew her at Todoroki, and they drew um, uh, Beyonce, Beyonce as uh, Bakugo. Okay, so it, it started entering, like, mainstream culture. That, that's a yeah. big entrance into mainstream culture. You got Beyonce, like, yeah. cosplayed or, like, uh, Not a- cosplayed, animated. Not cosplayed, but in the fan art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was going around. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so these nerds, these kids have no idea how, like, how, how lucky they got it. They really don't. <laughs> it's, it's so big. It's so big. I know that... What's his name? There, there was definitely a... And when, when we were doing our training at the, at the last spot... There was a portion where we were doing like an icebreaker training. We all broke into groups and then everyone had to find a commonality amongst all five or six of you in your group. And then I know that one of the groups, they were just like, we all watch anime. <laughs> that was yeah. like probably a range. They range from probably like 18 to like 30, 35. Yeah. And they're all just like, oh, yeah, we all watch anime. Yeah. Anime in America over the last 10 years has been like skyrocketed because viewership on Netflix. Netflix is, is a big so thing. Available. popularized yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, that's hilarious. Scramble. You could like, yeah, you could like identify. It's like I remember, I remember when the turning point started to, the tide started to turn. It started to gain more popularity. Yeah. And like, is that how do you feel about that? Or is that like a, do you feel like happy, or do you be like, ah, these people ain't really with it the way that we're with it, you know? I mean, I like the fact that it's you know that I got so many more opportunities now, and I got so many more. My whole thing is is that um, eventually this bubble is gonna burst. What do you mean? Okay. You know the socioeconomic bubble? Okay. As it gets bigger, eventually the bubble's going to burst. It's just like uh, the economy. Eventually, when your economy's doing good and you get this big economic bubble, eventually the bubble's going to burst. And we're already seeing that. There are so many conventions that started up, and now they're closing down. Mm, are you saying it's like a, like a recession or it's like a negative downturn in uh, finances? I, 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 yeah, exactly that. Because mm-hmm. there are so many conventions now. Like, I remember clear day in San Antonio, you had San Japan, IkiCon, that was it for anime. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, um, uh, this weekend, we have Halloween in San Antonio. Next weekend, we have PokeFest in San Antonio. Then the weekend after that, you see what I mean? And then this weekend, we just had a big Texas Comic Con. And then the weekend before that, there was a cadaver con in Corpus Christi. Dude, yeah, so that's just like oh, yeah, that's almost every thing. weekend or it's like almost every other weekend pace. Crazy pace. And not only that, but like OniCon was last weekend and OniCon's in Galveston. Mm-hmm. You have all the conventions that are happening at the same time. Whereas there was a time where it's like, okay, San Japan was this month, Acon was this month, Mizumi Con was this month, Ikki Con was this month, Anime Mod 3 was this month. 
Whereas now it's like all over the state, there's like at least five happening at the same time. Yeah. Just in Texas. Yeah. Whereas like you have places like Mississippi where they still only have like six a year in the entire state. Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. So I guess I think we kind of skirted around the initial question. But so, so you got the initial entrance into this society, into this culture, into this like group of people and then yeah. it was like okay i'm this is my people this is like my tribe i'm down with this and then from that point when you're in eighth grade when did you go from eighth grade attending the anime convention to performing at an anime convention uh i started performing at anime conventions in 2018 i believe that's around a few years after i graduated high school okay because i didn't have a product that it's like five or six years maybe after after you first went to a comic-con yeah, so I didn't I didn't feel like I had a product that was presentable. Where now I have a product that's very presentable. And, yeah. you know, I perform at around 20, 30 anime conventions a year. That's incredible. That's numbers. All around your, Texas? On your All head around top. Texas, yeah. People think they rap. <laughs> yeah, how many well, let's go. How many of y'all do 30 shows a year? That's that's numbers, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 20. It feels like 20, 30. I'm not really sure. I haven't really checked. No, either way. I believe you. More than one. That's I, awesome. Uh, it's like a continuous uh, like thing. This year, probably closer to like 10, 15 this year. Uh, but I don't know. That was one of my questions for you is what do you do to get booked? Uh, you just fill out a panel submission or you email them about guessing. Panel submission. So you're contacting, contacting the panel for the convention? Yeah. There is usually a form to fill out. Um, I host around 12 different panels. Wow. The Damn. concert's only one of them. Oh, okay. So what else do you do in conjunction with that? I do anime bingo. Oh, okay. Which is just like regular bingo, except me and my girlfriend will make jokes about the uh, characters as we call them. Like, for example, okay, the second worst dad in anime history, Goku. And people like reacting, and I'll be like, seriously, the only dad worst in Goku is the dad from Full Metal Alchemist. And I was like, oh, dude, too soon. I'm like, it's been 15 years. <laughs> That's classic though. That that's how that plays out. And then like um It's like a bit or it's like a comedy like a yeah, stand up. So Naruto was really popular and there's a lot of newer anime that I feel are just carbon copies from Naruto. So I'd be like, Naruto from Chainsaw Man and it uh and it's uh what's the name of the guy from Chainsaw Man? You know, the protagonist. Yeah, the protagonist. The redemption arc. I know it's not Deku. It's Denji. There, but it's boom. really Denji from Chainsaw Man. Or it's like, there's a character named Panda in Jujutsu Kaisen. And when we draw it, my girlfriend would be like, oh, it's my favorite place to get Chinese food. Because Panda from Jujutsu oh, Kaisen, he's it. basically a panda <laughs> that can talk. Right. Oh, sorry. It's over my head. It's over you're my fine. head. I'm out of. The, I'm out of the. I'm out of the inside. You're fine. You were with you. You you were with the first second. I was. I can just because I panda. You know what I'm saying? He said panda. So I was. I was over the chainsaw man thing. With the uh, yeah. oh yeah, and then one of my... I, I I just guessed. Okay. <laughs> the redemption arc seems like most protagonists and the yeah. anime go through it. Let's go. And then like uh, oh, the embodiment of short man syndrome, Vegeta. Let hmm. me tell you how toxic Vegeta is for a moment. Vegeta teaches us that if you want the girl you like to notice you, you got to kill her boyfriend, knock her up, and then go to space for two years that she raises the baby by herself. <laughs> That's pretty rough, Vegeta. That's a rough look, Wait, does bro. does Vegeta die? He dies, right? No. Well, yeah, he dies yeah, like, a couple what, times. See what I'm saying? That's a couple like, times. <laughs> that, that's clearly uh, someone who you don't want to be, you know? He was like the an- he was antagonistic like... at first. That was yeah, like his introduction to the show. Yeah. He's a complex character. Well, no, his character <laughs> development has been so good. Just like in Are Super, we in Super, Goku's like, "Hey, let's go and train." He's like, "I can't. I have to be here for the birth of my sec of my second kid because I wasn't there for the birth of my first kid." And Goku's like, "What? That's not a big deal. You don't oh. have to be here for the birth of your kid, <laughs> so you, bro. You need to be on the weights. You already <laughs> missed one. Come on, you'll be fine." Goku missed both of them, <laughs> dude. Goku, what was he? Was he training? He's trying to save the world. Yeah. They're trying to save the world. That's what it takes. That's what. Yeah. It, that's the sacrifice it costs to save the world. You know. What yeah, I'm but here's the thing. Like for example, that baby ain't gonna lift them weights. Like let me let here's for example. Why did Frida come to uh to Earth? To rule, to conquer it. Because Goku freaking had to fight him, and I was like, Goku, don't fight Frida. You don't want to fight Frida. Goku, said, no, I have to fight him. And if Goku hadn't fought Frida. Got the Dragon Balls, 
did what it had to do, and left, Frieza never would have came to Earth. So, if Goku hadn't meddled with the Red Ribbon Army, Cell and the Android wouldn't have been created, and nothing would have happened. Majin Buu. If Goku and Vegeta had just, you know, focused on the mission instead of fighting each other, Majin Buu never would have happened. The Dragon Ball Super, Goku is the main villain because he keeps picking fights with people that are supposedly stronger than him. And that's what's really the plot to Dragon Ball Super. Is Goku just wanted to fight somebody and everyone having to face the blowback. Could we not say this is the true lesson in uh, Dragon Ball Z? Don't we pick a fights unnecessarily? It's the extraction. <laughs> yeah. How, how simple it could all be if we let go of our ego. Mm-hmm. You know? Come on, Goku. Just relax, bro. Uh, just chill then, out, bro. Then another panel I do are Tadashi's Legacy. Um, Yoshihiro Tadashi, he created my favorite anime, Yu Yu Hakusho. He also created Hunter x Hunter, and he's married to the lady who created Sailor Moon. Oh, shit. So it's like Tadashi's Legacy. He has one anime that, like, in the 90s was, like, the biggest thing ever, and another anime in the 2010 that was, like, the biggest thing ever. And to this day... There's still a lot of Hunter x Hunter cosplayers at convention, and Hunter x Hunter has been over for like 10 years now. Wow. Where a lot of other anime who ended that ended around the same time, you don't see very many cosplayers anymore. Like Attack on Titan, you don't see a lot of those cosplayers anymore. But you'll still see a lot of uh, Hunter x Hunter. Hmm. And like I said, Sailor Moon, he's married to the lady who created Sailor Moon. So what will happen is we'll talk about Yu Yu Hakusho. And then our my friend who's a Hunter x Hunter expert, she'll talk about Hunter x Hunter, and then my girlfriend will talk about Sailor Moon, and that's essentially the whole panel is us talking about our favorite anime. That's right. Bang. Behind the wheel, Initial D, it's basically the same thing, but it's about Initial D. Initial D is an anime about street racing, and it takes place in like the mid '90s. So you see like the Mazda RX-7, the Toyota Supra. The Toyota AE86, the Nissan Silvia S13, 14, 15, the R32, the Honda, uh, EG Honda Civic. You know, you see all the cool cars that, you know, you just don't see anymore, at least bone stock. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the new Supra? What's that noise? I think it's in the, the mowing, mowing grass or something outside. Okay. Um, as far as the new Supra, um, I like it. But I don't like it at the, at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, if we had just gotten a carbon copy of the old Supra, I think it would have been better. But then again, in, in Japan and the rest of the world, they still got the Supra. We only got it for like a few years and we didn't really pay attention to it. Then the Fast and the Furious came out three years after it ended production. And then it's like, oh, now we really want Supra now. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. They tried to make it look like a race car. They tried to make it look like, oh, look at this, like, sporty. It's like a toy now, almost. I know, but underneath it's just a BMW. That's the thing. I, I would love to drive this car, but it's, you know. If you're going to buy a car at this price point, you almost might as well get a luxury car. What I really want is a Nissan Z. A Nissan Z? What do you like about that? What do I not do? <laughs> Google What's the to Nissan not Z like right about it? <laughs> Nissan Z in blue. As it, I'm gonna look up 2024, see if I can't get a the newest edition. I saw a Super Drive by the other day, and I was like, man, I'd love to get at least on one of those. So it's a uh, it's a retro styling to the 1969 Datsun Z. This thing right here. And I really love the rear end. Let's see what the backside looks like here. Hold on, that's not a great picture. It does look nice, so it's like almost boxy and flat. Yeah. It's sleek. It's yeah. sleeky. If yeah. Yeah, I really want one in blue. It's nice. It's a it's a two it's a coupe. Yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful, dude. Yeah, it's around the same price as a Supra. Yeah. Well like the entry level Supra. Yeah. And um yeah, if I was gonna pick one like a Japanese that's what I would pick. This is what this is them competing with the Supra, you think? Um I don't think the Z really had a competitor, honestly. Oh, the back is crazy, dude. Yeah. It's really nice right there. Yeah, that's a reference to the 90s Nissan Z. Really? Yeah. Uh, Google, like, 1995 Nissan Z. Brought it back. 
Brought it back one time. Yeah, that was our first time because uh, I followed the automotive industry. That was one of our first times where it's like, oh, here's a uh, here's a reference to the nineties. There it is. In a storage unit, <laughs> storage unit facility. Yeah, storage yeah. wars going on in the back. Here's a clean one. Bang. This thing's gorge, dude. Oh yeah, that's clean. Oh, That's clean. You guys ever watch Good Burger? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were driving a Nissan Z in really? the scene where he almost where he gets in an accident and hits a t-shirt car. Oh gosh. Looks like we can get you in a new one for about twenty eight thousand. Wait, what? The mid twenty Ks. That's a That's a Nissan Leaf. Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. That's what we're looking for. The Zeef. <laughs> sorry. That's what we're talking about. So they get you. Well, you yeah. Uncultured swine. <laughs> sorry, How sorry. dare you call a leaf a Zeef? It was a bad stock picture. It's a bad stock picture. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'll buy it right now if that's the price point. Like, what? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm appalled. <laughs> No, so yeah. why – I have another question. Mm-hmm. Why the Green Ranger? So I'm assuming is Power Rangers like your favorite like form of anime or your favorite show or was it just like the, the costumes? Uh, it's mainly the costume aesthetic where okay. I shoot the green. And put the green is easiest for me to put on and it's the more comfortable one. Uh-huh. Um, the White Ranger just gets dirty too hard. Yeah, uh, The Red Ranger, imagine. because of the maker, it's like I don't have free hands. And Power Rangers had become so synonymous for my brand that it's like, you know, I got to wear a suit whenever I do interviews. Whenever I know I what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way, but we wear like a suit, like a business yeah, suit. Yeah, you suit it up. And sometimes it's like, I got to wear the suit. It's a uniform. You know it's a uniform. Yeah. 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 So it, plus it's like, you know. And who makes them? Sorry, I was going to say, who, who makes them? You said there's different makers, like the Red the red Maker makes a, a kind of different type of suit versus the uh, Green the Maker? The Red Maker is from warpsuit.com, and the Green and White, they're just from eBay. Oh, okay, okay. So you had different sources, and yeah, that, one, yeah. that one just came out the best. Yeah. Like, another thing that I noticed is, like, um, whenever I was doing local rap shows, mm-hmm. like, 90% of them would wear a black T-shirt and jeans, mm-hmm. and it's like... Yeah, no, I don't want to do the black T-shirt and jeans. I want to stick out. I want to like uh, like Michael Jackson. He had the shiny outfits. He had the, uh, you know, they were bedazzled. They always stuck out. So because yeah, yeah. you know, I love Power Rangers. And look at this dude. Like if you if I perform at a local rap show, I'm gonna stick out. I'm gonna stick out hard. Hard, baby. Yeah. That's memorable. That's leave leave an impression. I'm coming over to see what you're doing. Yeah, right. Like, people are coming to check that out. Fuck yes. Very much so. And then, like, you'd be surprised how excited people get when I say, oh, I'm going to perform. What? Are you going to be wearing that? Yeah. Oh, I got to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas everyone else is just like, you know, they're just, they look like everybody else. Yeah. Black t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. The uni. What's, uh, what was I going to say? I guess, so, you said that you were, you had a different aesthetic and then you found, kind of found your crowd and found like your true authentic expression of yourself in like middle school, late middle school, which is, I think we're all trying to figure ourselves out at that point for sure, especially in high school when you enter that phase and we're still growing, but it's also that you had, you were, you were able to like meld and grow into that. But I guess with that being said, did you have like a, a, did your musical impressions change at all? Or were you always kind of into hip hop and you want to do rap or did you like venture into other types of music? Um... I've always loved rap music from the time I was 10 till even now. Um, now, my, uh, because I was in choir from, like, 7th grade to, like, 12th grade, I'm going to say, mm-hmm. um, my musical taste is very much expanded. Cool. Like, uh, right now, I'm listening to um, old music from uh, uh, John Wayne Westerns. Okay. Um, and... Listening to it like in the gym or like in the car or it's like, like on walks. Like in, like, just like in the car whenever I'm driving. Just jamming. You know, like, yeah, I'm just listening to old John Wayne. Like, uh, you ever watch El Dorado? I can't say I have. Okay, okay yeah, I, I don't think, yeah. Like in the movie El Dorado, the song, it's like really deep. So ride, boldly ride to the end of the rainbow. Ride, boldly ride till you find El Dorado. I'm with that. Yeah. And it's <laughs> a song. Fucking go. He killed yeah. that. Yeah, you murdered that shit. Yeah, because El Dorado is the city of gold, and the song is about, you know, basically don't give up on your dream till you find your you get there. city of gold. 
And then just so the aesthetic, in the movie, the opening, at the song going on, they're showing painting from what the West looked like during that time period. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh my god, the cinematography for this. The directing, this is so awesome, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, even um, Clint Eastwood, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I watched that for the first time ever. I only ever seen that. These are all the westerns you've been watching? Yeah. And it's like, as soon as um, it opens up with a gunshot, woo woo! And you're looking at the animations and the <laughs> opening credits, and I'm just like, how have I not seen this before? Wow, this is, wow. No wonder this movie is so good, right? And it's like, I can't imagine being in a movie theater in 1968 for the first time. Yeah. and watching it for the first time. And it's like, by the way, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, easily the best Western ever made. Really? I'm yeah. With it. Well, where'd you watch it on? Uh, HBO Max. So on HBO Max? So it's a trilogy. There's a fistful of dollars. Okay. And for a few dollars more. And then The Good, Bad, and The Ugly. But you don't got to watch the other two to know what's going on. The third one is, it's it's, it's it's got you. It's the same character, but the stories aren't connected. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's worth worth the watch. What makes it easily the best? What makes it easily the best is that, you know, uh... Just by how real it is, like when they're doing the Civil War thing, when they're in the middle of the Civil War, and the guy, the general, I believe, is like, hey, you want some food? Look, baby corn. All the baby corn we can eat. Our government spared no expense. Hmm. And then, like, you know, they're trying to capture this bridge, and the man just ended up dying. Um, And it didn't really have to. It's just that the war that's going on, and... Nobody really knows what they're doing. And the whole plot is that uh, Clint Eastwood and this other character, they're looking for a uh, they're looking for a cemetery plot and buried inside the coffin is two hundred thousand worth of gold. Mm. And that's what they're after. And so they're on a journey to find it, and along their journey, you know, they're experiencing the civil war. Could you fucking imagine? Finding two hundred thousand dollars worth of gold during that time. So Dude. here's the thing: we're rich, <laughs> boys. We're rich. Dude, <laughs> so here's the, here's the yeah, main plot point: everything you had going on in your whole life, right there. One guy knows the location Spoiled of money, the cemetery, mm-hmm. but the other guy knows which uh, which plot is which it? grave which is that? Which grave? Yeah. So it's like, you tell me where the grave is at, and I'll tell you where where, to where we're going. No, I don't think so. You tell me where we're going. I'll tell you what grave. And they got their hands on their pistols. And it's like they don't trust each other. You can't trust anything. You can't trust no one. Out yeah. It's the Wild West. Whole, yeah, throughout wild, the whole wild journey, West. you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That's awesome. So I guess you, that, that's been your current musical influence. What about like uh, hip hop music? Or what do you? Or when did you kind of get into hip hop music? And then when you did, who did you kind of Let's gravitate see. towards? My first, like, say, when I first got into it, you know, Eminem, obviously. Oh, yeah, 8 Mile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first CD my father got me was um, 50 Cent The Massacre. Okay. And he got me that one because they were out of Eminem's album. So the next time, I was like, <laughs> okay, I finally got the Encore album. And I loved the Encore album. Great album. And then after that, it's like, you know, Ludacris. I discovered he was a rapper. And I really loved The Fast and the Furious. So it's like, I got to get Ludacris The Red Light District because I really love, get back, get back. You don't know me <laughs> like that. that. Get back. New I ain't playing around. <laughs> Make one false move, I'll take you down. Yo, yeah. But yeah. Ludacris is a super underappreciated rapper. Oh, yeah. I think L- so, Ludacris too. Ludacris is Big like time. the Tim Duncan of rappers. <laughs> Yo, Yo that's I love a, that. That's really good. That's yeah. really good. So, and then... He um, a bad song. Snoop Dogg, Rhythm and Gangster. When the pimp's in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. And then finally... I woke up from that coma in 2001. About the same time Dre dropped 2001. Three years later, the album is done. After Matt presents Enward with an Attitude Volume 1. The <laughs> game, the documentary, that album was so fire, bro. So that was my hip-hop foundation. Mm-hmm. And right now, as far as rap music, um, I'm really following along with the whole Kendrick Lamar Drake thing going on. Oh yeah, that was a that was a big yeah. thing. It's it's still going. Kendrick was taking subliminal shots at the Super Bowl 
announcement. Yeah. Bro, I cannot that was wait. Dirty work. I cannot. That was dirty, I cannot filthy wait. work. Go to the Super Bowl uh. where they have Drake picture all on a giant green, and Kendrick's like certified lover boy. He's a certified pedophile. Pedophile. Millions, go. millions of people. I mean, I'm nationwide. Nationwide. In, in your homes in America, with families a gathered. People. A billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got that shit streamed to all countries, bro. Everyone's gonna be in fucking Spanish. <laughs> I'm not sure how to say pedophile in Spanish, but they're gonna be saying it. Yeah. And then, like, like meet the gram, bro. Meet the gram when he said, Dear Dennis, you should have wore a condom. I'm like, Oh my god, <laughs> filthy work, filthy work. That's wet work. <laughs> He's coming in, cleaning them up. Yeah, and then, like, you lied about this something. You lied about it. You lied about... I, I don't know all the words, but like... Mm. I was just thinking about... Or when that came out, I remember thinking to myself, it's fucked up to be talking to my mom about how fucked up my her son is. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's, that's just tough, you know? Like, yeah. hey man, shut the fuck up. I, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it's a little rough. I, I think I kind of... I didn't really like that. or Not that I didn't like that song per se, but I think I kind of discredited it or kind of moved it to the side i think just almost solely because it was uh he was it wasn't true or i think because that was a song where he like quote unquote did the big reveal where he had a daughter or whatever but yeah. then like that turned out to like not be true at all yeah so then in my mind i was like oh, okay that's we the information yeah, that sounds kind of so <laughs> are y'all familiar with the metro booming challenge uh the bbl drizzy <laughs> yeah he he got the dub he got the dub of all dubs. So I um, have so you... the the Metro Booming Challenge was you're supposed to create a verse for it, mm-hmm. yeah. and the winning verse would win like ten thousand dollars in the Metro Booming beat. Yeah. So in my verse, I said that uh, that's not his kid. That's a souvenir from Epstein. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, that's heat. That's heat. That's heat. That's that, that's a uh, the kind of that's the kind of bars they're throwing around. Those are the kind of bars that you need to bring to that that gunfight. Yeah, that's the that's, that's like the ammo. MMA move you would go to next. Yeah, that, Drake that, would have. T- he needs some time to respond. He'd respond to you. <laughs> he would get his attention. How many likes and views did did, did you were you able to get a, a a buzz for the track for the rewrite for the verse? No, um, let's it's hard see. to do. Everywhere except for Instagram, it got taken down due to copyright issues. But everyone else's got to stay on, and I have no idea it's why. Like Metro, what the fuck? I'm, tr- I'm trying to do your challenge here. I know, but everyone else's challenge got to yeah. stay on, but mine got taken down, and I have no idea why. Interesting. Yo. Maybe there's some sort of way to upload it or a certain certain audio clip to use. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I, don't know I, I even played a guitar solo on that thing. Dude, they, Damn it. <laughs> they didn't like you. They didn't like you putting the, your finger on the, the F-scene angle. <laughs> Exposing like, hey, man. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I know. He still has a lot of friends. Yeah, it could be that. I don't know. Lord, yeah. Lord knows, man. Jeez, Louise. Did you remember, do you remember your verse? Let's see. Let me see. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know you like that. I'm just hopping on a trend on that Metro track. Don't rap against Kendrick Ender. Don't rap against Kendrick ever. That's what your name means. We know that's not your kid. That's a souvenir from Epstein. We saw you that's on bars. the You <laughs> yeah, were in the top five. Right next to Robert Kelly, biggest pervert alive. Toronto rappers, we know you always watch him. You're the T.D. Jake, bro. You're the power bottom. Uh. Oh, dude. That's gas, dude. Good thing about it. He's at every Raptors game. He's, like, hugging them, like, uncomfortably. Yeah. Like, there's pictures where he's grabbing their butts and shit. Yeah, he raps about him. Yeah. Huh? I said he raps about he. T- yeah. Drake, yeah. Know? And then like uh, T.D. Jake was recently came out at, at uh, Young T.D. Diddy Jake's party T- after T.D. Jake with a power bottom. And it's like uh, Drake uh, meat rides uh, the Toronto Raptors so much I wouldn't be surprised if he would their power bottom. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dude, there's no talent. What's going on I, with all the celebs, dude? I don't you know, know who's power and being know the for crazy, who, dude. I, you want to know the crazy it might be coming part? Out, it might be coming out. All the stuff coming out at Diddy party? Yeah. Do you ever think, stop to think maybe this was happening at the Playboy parties long before Diddy was doing them? Cause I mean, yeah. This sure. is this is probably like the just just, the, just the, the tip of the iceberg. Here's like, the thing for me is Diddy seems more like it was um guy on guy action, whereas Playboy more, you know, probably just young models getting like day raped, you know what I'm saying? That's what it seems like. Yeah. Stuff. 
stuff seems like that's what was going on. Tough either way. Right, let me t- you know, let me tell you something that would happen at the Playboy Mansion in the eighties. Andre the Giant, right? He would stack girl. He would stack the girls on top of each other five high, and finger fuck all of them at the same time because his hands were so big. Wow. Where are you getting this information, sir? Bad grandpa. <laughs> Robert Dean Hero said it in Bad Grandpa. <laughs> Okay. Could have happened. It's possible. He got some big ass hands. <laughs> Allegedly, they're just doing this shit for fun, though. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you know they they want to do I, drugs, like the, and like, get um, people high, and fucking. Oh, it's not just that. Like the junkyard dog, um, he would charge women to to sleep with him. Who's that? He's a wrestler from the '80s. The junkyard dog. That's just... yeah, the junkyard dog. <laughs> he, he he wrestled during the Hulk Hogan Macho Man era. Oh, and... Christ. Yeah, if he would have had an OnlyFans, I mean, he would have just he'd been raking. When Tony Atlas was low on money, he helped Tony Atlas get money by getting in this, you know, prostitution ring. And same with the Sandman from ECW. When he was working at Chippendales, he was doing this with women, where he was charging them to sleep with him at the local motel that was across the street from the Chippendale that he worked at. Wow. And I mean, this information I got from Dark Side of the Ring. You know. Dark Side of the Ring is a documentary what, series. Oh, okay. On one hand, there's definitely a lot of people that would say, that guy's my hero. <laughs> but on an, on the other hand... Right, other, like, what the fuck, there's, a, there's also a group of people who are like, man, them were the days when women wanted to sleep with guys, where now it's like, ah... Uh, Beyonce, I feel like Beyonce took us on a, started a trend that just blew up now. Because Destiny Child, y'all know who Destiny Child is, right? Uh, of course. What was their first song? Can you pay my bill? Can you pay my cell phone bill? Can you pay my automobile? Then maybe we can chill. Next song? That's fucked. I'm a woman independent. Throw your hands up in the <laughs> no, You're not independent. You have a guy paying your bill. You clearly <laughs> said in your last song... Oh no, unless you can pay my bills, we can't talk. We can't even chill. So now. We can't even Netflix and chill. Netflix ain't even a Now that you have the guy paying your bills, you're claiming to be independent. And then next song Ladies, leave your man at home. The club is full of ballers and the pocket full of grown. It's 11 30 in the club, it jump in. So let me get this straight. I gotta pay your bills. I gotta let you claim to be independent, and I gotta let you cheat on me? What? No. <laughs> Dude, do you think she's a plant like a shill? She, oh, I don't know. Dude, it sounds to me like... Because, like, if you look on social media, I'm not sure if, um... I'm not sure if it's, like, real or not. But, like, there's women on social media all, like, this guy had to make six figures. He had to take care of me and my kids, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, like, I feel like Beyonce started us on this trend with those three songs. I, I felt know. the same way about Cardi B when she came out. Yeah, I think mean, Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion definitely added flames to that, or added fucking gasoline to that fire. The same, the same thing though, you know. Like uh, we make money. Nicki Minaj, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's a trend for female artists is to. Oh, speaking of Nicki Minaj, my favorite line by her is, "He talks my salad like his name is Romaine." <laughs> <laughs> she does have a Come career on. off of saying appalling, you know, shocking stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but no, there's still great shock. women. There's still great women out there. I think social media just like you know. Yeah, uh, I've seen both ends. I've seen both ends of the spectrum. Because my girlfriend is amazing. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, That's I love great. that shit, bro. That's yeah. it. Yeah, women, That's women get to leverage a lot in our culture as far as, like, you know, they they get to give babies and, like, uh, be mothers of those children and, like, raise them and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, women, they, like, across and upward because they, like, can. So I think sometimes women want to, like, experiment with what that upward is. Like, how much is this getting at the market, you know? Cardi, Beyonce says it's getting all my bills paid. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, I think, but I think ultimately you don't want to go into a relationship looking to see what My whole thing is in 2024, it's like, I know what I bring to the table. What do you bring to the table? Because this isn't 1955 where it's like, you need a man to have a bank account. You need a husband to do this. You need a husband to do that. Because there was a time where women couldn't drive unless they were married. Women couldn't do a lot of stuff unless they were married. Whereas now, women don't need a man for all this stuff anymore. They can literally be independent. And a lot of them are. And what's going on is now, I feel like there's a lot of guys that are... 
um, not trying as hard. Like, for example, I know this one dude who complained about girls not liking him, and it's like he still wears a T-shirt, basketball shorts, and sandals everywhere. And I'm like, well, look at you, bro. You're not even trying. Yeah, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah, it's like, you know, I know you're, I know you're financially independent, but you're not that financially independent. Because mm-hmm. it's like, when you're in high school and in your early 20s, it's like, oh, yeah, I want a guy who just, I want a girl, a person who's just like me. You know, I want their personality, yada, yada. Whereas at 30, you're thinking like, is this person financially secure? Can this person make responsible decisions? Does this person have a cocaine problem that they're hiding from me? Because at 30, you got to start looking at those things. That's some real shit, bro. (laughs) Yeah, like I once saw this post that said the reason why you're not invited to places is because you don't do cocaine. (laughs) So. That's a rampant. It could be. That's a rampant drug. It could be. It's still still circling. It's a hell of a drug. Yeah, Rick James, and I quote. Stay off of that because I'm a fiend. Yeah, people are crazy, bro. Just... The, the the women are crazy. Everything's all crazy. I think oh. we were talking about just like the. I think I don't know. It might be somewhat of an agenda to get the women to be like I don't know. It it, it started with the idea of like compassion or like equality. It's like women independence. Do your thing. You don't need a man. Like we don't need men to vote. We we're, we we could be independent people. Yeah. But now it's like I think the pendulum may have swung too far in that direction, and then maybe that. I guess that was kind of what we were you alluding said women to. Are too independent. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was saying it's so, like the, the overall theme of the agenda was like but, in a good place, but, but it's it's gone a little far. Oh, I will say it's gone sex, a little crazy. Sexy red took it a little far. Sexy red took it a little far. <laughs> Let me put it to you like this: Childish Gambino said this that you know, and and this is, he and a lot of too. women are right to believe this. In modern times, crazy woman stories are like. Hey, you remember that girl I was dating and she busted my windshield because she had a bad dream that I was cheating on her? She was crazy, right? <laughs> Whereas crazy man stories are like, well, he was nice at first and then uh, he killed my dog and <laughs> I had to move to Florida and he found me and that's how I ended up in this wheelchair. You guys are laughing, but like for some people, those are, those are big stories. Like uh, there are guys where... I can't tell her personal story, but um, this friend I know, her she broke up with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend started spreading rumors about her. And here's the thing. Six months ago, nobody liked her boyfriend. They're like, oh, you got to bring him. I'm sorry. He's driving me, but we don't want him here. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, these same people, they're friends with the boyfriend and not friends with her because they're believing these rumors and everything. Yeah, he's just defaming her or trying to slander her yeah, reputation. Yeah, exactly. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucked up. They're sociopaths in our societies. Yeah, people are crazy. Yeah. yeah there I, are crazy people out there. I blame yeah. social media. A lot of it. There's I think a, th- that's kind of what I was alluding to. Is like there, there might be an agenda. The social media might be pushing that agenda forward plus or helping of, that agenda. Plus, a lot of people, I feel, I feel a lot of people haven't really had to struggle as much as they think. You know, like for example, my mother was a drunk who was never there. My father was an on and off drug addict. And there was a time where I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. Mm -hmm. That's a struggle. Um, I know somebody where, you know, one of my coworkers, we were talking about what we were doing when we were 20. And I was talking about how my 20, the year 20 was so awesome. And he's like, oh, when I was 20, I was getting shipped out to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So where there are some people where they feel like they may have to struggle because their parents were too hard on them or my parents don't acknowledge my whatever, my choices. And it's like, no, you don't really you don't really know what it's like to struggle. Like one of my friends, he got mad at his parents because they made him go to Hawaii with them and he wanted to watch a, a basketball game. So he is sitting at a bar in Hawaii complaining and it's like, you didn't have to pay for this. What are you doing? You're in Hawaii about? right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's some, some people you can't win. It's like they want, they're kind of stuck in the mindset of like, I'm trying to feel this way or I want to feel this way or like I have this expectation that I want to have met. And if it's not met in the way that I want it to be met, then I'm going to like, eh, I'm going to throw a fit. I'm going to throw a fit so. about it until it goes the way that I want it to go. That's very true. Now, we have about an hour left. Let's talk what we really came here for. Okay. Let's talk the mu- music. So, out of all my songs on Spotify, which one do y'all like most? I liked the Frieza song. Uh-huh. I think I listened to that one and the Green Ranger song. And what about you, Matthew? 
I, I, I'm unversed. I haven't listened to very much. Okay. What song should we listen to? So anyone, if anyone's got one song of yours to listen to, what is it that you recommend? Dami Mommy. Dami Mommy. I saw the other ones had more views. Like, is, did that one not have? I think that was those. those the ones I saw were the most. I think the most viewed on the top page. Mm-hmm. But Dami Mommy is it like a, a deep cut or is that why is that the the, the recommendation? It's the best song. Okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, what makes it the YouTube best song? Right quick. Do y'all yeah. have audio coming from here? Yeah. Yeah, we have the remote right here. On YouTube. Okay, y'all got to watch the lyric video too. Dude, put me on game, dude. Dami. No. Mommy. When you're making this lyric video. Type uh, in Deacon Rap. Okay, you got it. D-E-A-C-O-N-R-A-P. No, no space. And put Dami Mommy. D-O-M-I-A. No, no, no. D-O-M-M-Y. Yeah. Obviously, I like that. And then mommy. Okay. Okay, second video. Okay, I, I didn't hook it up to the headphones, but we could play it on the TV. Oh, that'll work. This is it right here? Yeah. Dude, this f- fucking, this video is gas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn, the one part I don't hook it up. <laughs> this is gas. You made this, they made the video yourself too? Not exactly. Oh, well, okay, I okay. edited the video like this, but like I didn't like make the, the cut. Like the lyrics or the captions? Yeah, I made the captions and everything. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But someone edited it together? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Rhea Ripley, I'm assuming, is a wrestler. Yeah. That, that's her right there, right? Yes, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, dude, she's bad. Where did the inspiration come from for this song? Oh, my God. It's a lifestyle, dude. Give me the story. <laughs> Give me the origin story of this art. Is there another verse? I don't want to. No, there is, and you can stop it. Okay. So, from 2006 to about late 26, 20, 2013, I was a huge wrestling fan. I was John Cena for Halloween all throughout middle school. And then around 2013, I just kind of fell off wrestling because it, it just wasn't fun anymore. Mm hmm. And then around 2023, the Royal Rumble was happening in San Antonio. And I was doing Uber driving, and I was taking people to the Royal Rumble, and I had Peacock. And when you have Peacock, you get to watch all the um, all the pay-per-view for free. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a shot, right? So I'm watching the Women's Royal Rumble, and she enters in at number two. I'm like, who is this? Right? She looked like, <laughs> she looked like a remake of China, but like more modernized, right? Okay. Let me tell you what she does. She makes someone bleed. She wiped the blood on off of them and then wipes it across her face in the midst of the rumble. I'm like, damn, this is good, right? Because I know a lot about the artistic aspects of wrestling. And then, like, for a good amount of the match, she was, like, you know, laying in the corner. And I later learned in the uh, post uh, interview that she dislocated one of her knees and That's had right. it relocated mid fight. Let's go. And then she wins, right? Mm-hmm. And I fell in love with wrestling again. She brought you back. She brought me back to wrestling. And oh my God, when she cuts her... She is so good at this, bro. Like, I'm not sure if she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen because she <laughs> actually is. Or if she's the most beautiful... Or if I'm just like being a wrestling fanboy because the way she cuts her promo, the way that she wrestles, everything about her is so perfect, bro. Like, I'm, I want to I want to paraphrase Chris Rock. She's so fine. Oh, she's so fine. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, mommy, mommy, if you're watching this, please peg me. Whoa. <laughs> what do you think Ben me You heard it here meant? first. What you do heard you it here ben, first. I, I, I knew what it meant. <laughs> she's a Dommy Mommy, dude. That was never a question in my mind. Never a question. Yeah, yeah. Dommy Mommy, dude. That's her brand, dude. I mean, that's what she she came, she came to do that. That's why she's, <laughs> she's got it in saying? the back. Like, mommy, I'll be your good boy. I'll call you mommy. I think I think he's just you're just down to play ball because that's what she's into, <laughs> right? 
Uh, no, that's just what her character is into. Yeah. I don't know what she's really into. Because it's just like like The Undertaker, right? Are uh-huh. y'all from, like, he's a dead man, he's undead. But the actual guy is like, man, I just want to ride my motorcycle and play video games. Mm-hmm. You know? Really? So I'm not sure if that's really her, if it, that's her character. Yeah, so what's the, what's the character name? Do you know her, her, actri- or her actual name? Oh, the, both the, bo- her actual name is Rhea Ripley and her character name is Rhea Ripley. Oh, really? Yeah. She shows up like, her, her, by her legal name? Yeah. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. She's committed to the bit. Yeah, maybe. I don't she's, know how much separation there is between she's in this motherfucker, the character and, this, and the real woman. I mean, uh, no, no. Um, her real name is Demi Burnett. Oh, okay. Sorry, but yeah. Okay. Still though, but yeah, there, there might be some sort of separation between the two. Oh you know yeah, what I'm, I'm sure there is. Yeah, there, there always is because like, um, what you called it? Uh, like the Undertaker is not really a dead man. Yeah, this is like Kane. a different woman. <laughs> what? She's not a dummy mommy. She's like a like a, like a good mommy. Yeah, she's, she's like not, a white big events mommy. She's not, like an apple pie kind of mommy. <laughs> she doesn't have blue eyes. No, no. Uh, Debbie Burnett. Oh, that is that is an actual different lady. <laughs> no, that's a different Debbie Burnett. Okay, okay. It's a different woman. I was like, it's literally yo. a different woman. <laughs> that's okay. It's fine. But but just to say that you know the yeah. real person isn't necessarily the wrestling brand. No. Uh, it, it it's like this. Uh. WWE, um, especially with um, with the character, there's a fine line between the real person and the character. But when you've been doing it long enough, it's hard to go back to being the real person. Like mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan says, no, I wrestled with a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys, they become the character for 10 years and then they're released from the company. They go home. They don't fit in. You know, it's like, well, dad's home. Now what dad's going to do? Dad doesn't know what to do. So now these guys, they turn to drugs. They turn to drinking. And they basically self sabotage it because they don't know how to function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, why don't you just chill? Or how to be the other character? Yeah, I don't think I'd have that problem. If I, if I had ten million dollars, I'm pretty chill. I just needed to hang out at home with all your money. Yeah, but maybe the it, way you it's got not that about money. hanging out at home with all your money. It's like people aren't chanting your name anymore. People are chanting someone else's name. I think that that would be. <laughs> Obviously, so, uh, something you know that you need to get over. Yeah, you need to. Or I guess it's like it's the in, maybe it's the inability to like to to know what know what to do and develop the character of like you, like your normal personality, mm-hmm. like whatever your name is. It's like mm-hmm. you don't really have a that thing was just a vehicle to get you to be your character or the thing that got you all yeah. the money. But yeah, then that thing's ever, taken away. You guys ever watched The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke? No, I've heard. Is oh, it a movie? It's a, it's, yeah, it's a movie. It's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Okay, I've heard. I've heard, I've definitely heard the name. The wrestler. Yeah. It's like when the spotlight is over, it's like, well, this is all I know how to do. This is the only way I know how to really make money. And then it's like you get that whole uh, talk from the doctor where the doctor said you can't do this anymore, so you try and function in regular society. And it's like you can't function in regular society. You get hurt all the time in regular society. Where it's like in that ring, that's the only place you don't really get hurt, you know, metaphorically and mostly, and you know, mm, you get yeah, what I mean. No. Yeah. So, Steam, Steam. Yeah, th- I think what you're saying, the, the you, right? Like, you got to do something other than just wrestling. Yeah, it's like being a character. You're being a character, like you're acting. You know, what I'm saying like yeah. actors probably have a similar. Let me quote. M- let me quote Eminem. There's nothing for me to fall back on. I know no other trades. Mm-hmm. That's where what a lot of wrestlers come down to is like there's nothing to fall back on because they know don't know any other trades, and especially wrestlers back then. I don't know how wrestlers today are going to be twenty years from now. Mm-hmm. Different struggles, different like Ric Flair. Uh-huh. <laughs> he ended up owing a lot of money to the IRS. Hulk Hogan had a shitty manager that took a lot of his money in the mid nineties. Um, wrestlers go like Batista went broke. Mm-hmm. And you know, start a podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's like I think uh, there's a show. It's, I think it's called is it The Rock. I think he stars in it and produces it, maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, Ballers, I think is what it's called. Yeah. yeah. I think the kind of what we're talking about is also seen in that show or portrayed in that show, where it's like ex or NFL athletes who retire. It's like yeah. they don't really know what to do after they retire. They're just like, I don't, I don't know. We'll sell cars, or it's like they're trying to figure out who yeah. to be outside of the league. You know, and what I'm you know, Ballers. My favorite line from that is when The Rock says, "I gave, I dedicated my life to a game that doesn't give a fuck about me anymore." 
for some reason, that line just stuck with me. And then when you go watch Young Rock and you look at his uh, high school and college football career, it's like, ah, oh, damn, he knows that very well. It's like you dedicated your life to this thing. Now it's over. That was and the it's only not thing. by choice. Yeah. So it's like, what do I do now? Now who, now who am I? Yeah, who am I? And who is this person that I am? What are they, what are they trying to yeah. do? And it's like, and it gets hard because, like, you don't really like the new person you're becoming. You want to be that old person again. Whereas in the Rock case, he went from... He went from being a college football star to being WWE champion to being the most electrifying man in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And now he's on and off in WWE again. And he's so good at it, bro. Coming back, coming back to the roots. Does it, I think he's a daughter, right? Doesn't his daughter wrestle as well? She wrestles under the name Ava Rain. Okay. His cousin is Roman Reigns. And his other Actually, I didn't even know that. I've heard that name before. I've I've heard rappers use it as a I think fucking I've heard I've heard it use it as a oh, rapper. Roman, Ra Roman Reigns that? is the tribal chief. Okay. Look up Roman Reigns. He's uh he had he Roman was WWE Reigns. champion for like over a thousand days straight. Oh, okay. So he was he was winning he he's he's the rock's cousin? Yeah, he Oh no shit. Yeah. Like I'm Roman Reigns. Yeah, there's like thirty members of the Rock family that are currently active in W in wrestling. That's Dude, tight. He's the plug. I'll get you in there. <laughs> yeah, right. What'd you say? If you know the Rock, he might be able to help uh, help get you into the league. Or like yeah. Roman Reigns. Or it's like this. Just because you're related to the Rock doesn't mean you're gonna make it. Oh yeah. Because like yeah, Solo Tacoa is related to the Rock. But he just looks like a tribal chief in cosplay. Pebble. Um, yeah, no rock. Yeah. Um, Roman Reigns <laughs> was related to The Rock, but for the first few years, nobody liked him. He was the heel? No, it's not that he was the heel. People just didn't, they didn't buy it. He was just ass. He was just bad. <laughs> he was just bad. This guy, this guy could start in a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could be in Fast and Furious as the villain, no problem. He Easy. was in, he was in Fast, he was in Hobbs and Shaw. There you go. That's, <laughs> yeah. I was like, actually, I remember this guy from that movie. And I was like, literally, where I had a peg. You got okay, him. Got it. You got him. But that's that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's uh, something that more wrestlers. Do you think there's acting career avenues for some of these wrestlers? Um, absolutely. Dami, the, mommy, the John Cena. One, two, uh, and Hulk three. Hogan made it possible. Hulk Hogan. He made it possible when he was in um he was in Rocky three. Oh wow! And then he made a bunch of made for TV movies, and then like um. Macho Man was in Spider Man, and then John Cena was in movies. Batista's in movies, and it's like it's getting to the point where WWE, if you get big enough and become a megastar, you have a career in Hollywood. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's uh, Sylvester. <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone, I'd argue, made it possible for people to make movies. Big people, like yeah. physically big people, could just make movies. Oh yeah, Andre the Giant. Mm. He was in The Princess Bride. Uh, his role was made specifically for him. And then The Rock grandfather was in uh, was in James Bond films. That's what I'm saying. If you get big enough, dog, like literally, like you put on enough weight in the gym, you could just be in movies. Those doors should just open up. We'll make up. movies around you. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> like Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Like you're the man for the job, Yeah, kid. but you got to remember, he wouldn't have got that role if he didn't win all those uh, weightlifting championships. And mm -hmm. bodybuilding championships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing with The Rock. He probably wouldn't have been as large at the time of going into wrestling if it wasn't for playing so much football. It's not just playing football. You got to remember, his dad is Rocky Johnson, the first black world tag team champion. And his grandfather was high priest Peter Maivia. And his uncles are the Wild Samoans. So it's like, you know, he grew up around us. You know, family about it. Oh, yeah. It was a family oh, he business. He was the heir. He was the heir to the throne. Yeah, didn't his dad not want him to do it whenever he, like, he told him yeah, about it? Yeah, because uh, his dad comes from a different time period where, like, um, like Tony Atlas once said, you can't do what the white man do and keep your job. Mm. So, and then plus it's like, you know, um, Rocky Johnson, you know, when wrestling went mainstream, uh, Vince didn't pick him. You know, mm. Vince picked others to be in his mainstream WWF. And Rocky Johnson, like, he was already past his prime. So he didn't want his son to have to go through that same thing. And what happened, wrestling needs The Rock now more than The Rock needs wrestling. Yeah, The Rock's bigger than wrestling, I think, right now, right? That's a true come I think up. It's pretty, I think it's pretty safe to say. That's a big old come up right there. 
He's huge, bro. He's a, he's the most famous actor, I would say, right? Wasn't he like the most famous? Isn't like the isn't that, isn't that arguably stat? most recognizable? <laughs> yeah, at one point, cause like I remember in like 2013, he was on SNL, and he did a song called "Franchise Viagra." Okay. And he was saying, "Oh yeah, they call me Franchise Viagra because I make the movies bigger." Because <laughs> they put him in the Fast and the Furious, they put him in GI Joe, they put him in like you know different sequels. Yeah. And what are you typing? What are you typing? Who are the most famous actors in the world? Most famous actors in the so world. So we get The Rock here on the list. The Rock's got to be top 10. Who, who do y'all think is number one? Number... Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo's Tom number Hanks, one. Robert De Niro. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to guess some. <laughs> Leo, Leo's definitely up there. Tom Hanks would have said that. De Niro. Uh, I don't think I would have guessed him. Guess what? Everybody's got to guess one more. Will Smith has got to be one of the biggest actors in the world for sure. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Nicolas Cage. Dude, okay. I love Nicolas Cage. He's fire. I've been watching nothing but Nicolas Cage movies for. I watched another one last night. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Uh, yeah, I didn't get to finish it because we keep not finishing movies. But it was called The Family Man, mm-hmm. and it's like he's this business tycoon, Porsche driving, like psycho, not a psychopath, but close to it. Okay. And then it takes him back in time, like Don Cheadle, like a mm-hmm. Ghost of Christmas Past, takes him back in time. <laughs> And then to another reality where if he would have married his college sweetheart and he's like in the house and they have kids and he wakes up and they're all fucking, you know, kind of poor. And he's got to go do his job as like a, he works at like a discount tire. Yeah. And he's just like, what is going on? Mm. Living in another timeline. But he's great. He's so good in it. That's you know good. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Excuse okay, so you me. Think Nicholas Cage is one of the most famous. Excuse me. I just stole 50 cards from you in one night. I'm a little tired. I'm a little wired, and I think I deserve some appreciation. Staying with my brother. It's done. It's over. Gone in six seconds. Gone in six seconds. seconds. Classic. One of the best Nicolas Cage movies. That was a banger. I need to watch that one again. Yeah, I need to watch that as an adult. adult. I haven't seen that movie in probably 15, 20 years. Uh, Do you guys ever see Leaving Las Vegas? No. So it's about a guy, um, Nicolas Cage plays him. Brad Pitt is my guess. Brad Pitt. Uh, Basically, it's about a guy who loses his wife and his kid in a car accident, and decides he's gonna quit his job, move to Las Vegas, and drink himself to death. Oh, jeez, it is. Yeah. Let's see. Nicholas Cage is in that. There, there is a. Yeah, he. There is a list right here on IMDb. We can. Yeah, what's IMDb say oh, about Samuel, it? Oh, Samuel. Okay, do you guys ever watch Samuel Doctor L. Who? Samuel Jackson. Do you guys watch Doctor Who? No. I see the clips on YouTube. I know it's a it cult just, following. Oh, if, I, so oh, if I was on SNL, I would want Samuel L. Jackson to play the Doctor. Because I want to hear, what does a Zygonaut look like? What? What planet are you from? What? What ain't no planet I ever heard of? They speak English <laughs> and what? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? And I want, also want to hear... Though I recognize your skills and talents, I do not grant you the rank of Time Lord and the best one. <clears throat> enough is enough. I've had it with these motherfucking dialects on this motherfucking ship. <laughs> Everybody strap up. I'm about to open some fucking time windows. Come on. <laughs> that would be it. That'd be it. That's a great pitch. Yeah. And then like... Talk about crossing boundaries right there. That show would wide open. If, if Samuel L. Jackson is the Doctor Who, that would go more than viral. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing. I only want him to be in like a clip. He doesn't need to be in a whole season. I mean, if he's open to it, maybe he can be the first American Doctor. But come on, you want America to watch that show? Boom, you got us. Mm. Yeah, can you imagine Samuel L. Jackson as a time traveler? <laughs> oh, what? Well, because he got short. He's due. Maybe because he'd be great. He got shorted as Mace Windu. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Tupac was originally um, the one originally casted for Mace Windu? That what? Yeah, so during the planning phases, um, George Lucas wrote Mace Windu for Tupac. Oh, shit. And then Tupac died. Oh, dude. He would have been big as the what? Yeah. <laughs> In the Star Wars sequel, or not sequels, but movies, series, yeah. saga. I think he would have been huge. That would have been. Did you guys ever watch Juice? Yeah. yeah. Tupac would have been, would have been a not bad Joker. We already know he wouldn't have been a, the best Joker, but it's like, oh no, he's pretty good. Like, you know, he knows he's not going to be like Nicholson or Ledger, but like, he knows he's ranked up. 
Yeah. Who knows what it would have done for that movie? Yeah, yeah. that movie was crazy. I remember watching yeah, that movie. Yeah, because like while ago. Jude, like he, because after he get the gun, notice he goes a little. He's a little crazy. Yeah, after he get the gun. He's like, I'm motherfucking crazy. <laughs> What's that, I don't know the scene exactly. Samuel Jackson it's comes l- up at number 14 on this list. It's like Who's it's- top 10? It goes up. Brad Pitt is number one on this list. Damn, let's go. My boy's guest. Bang. Number one, Brad Pitt. He's number one actor. This is on IMDb. He's the number one in my own tier list. That's why I just like went really? with that. Really? That's yeah. crazy. It goes like, for me, it's Brad Pitt. And then right underneath him are Matt Damon. Uh, I got Leo up there. Leo's in that, Leo's up there. that category. Tom Hanks is up there. Tom Hanks is right there, but really, um, it's Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon, Leo. Those are the three I think about, like Brad Pitt, right under Brad Pitt, yeah. hmm. and then Christian Bale's in that same category too. Mm-hmm. So, what's your favorite Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Matt Damon, <laughs> man. Okay, so catch me. If, He's got catch good. Me if you can, it's that's a great movie. An absolute like that's one of those movies where I don't care who you are. There's no way you sit down and you're not like. And you've never, if you've never seen it, you need to watch it, and you'll be like, "Oh, that was a good movie. That was worth the time." Like for sure. So, some movies are just so good, unquestionable. No matter what, people are like, "That was awesome. I oh, love yeah. that." I like that movie a lot. I like Wolf of Wall Street a lot. Oh my god, so that's what <laughs> I was Wolf waiting of Wall for. Street a lot. My favorite line. It's gonna be one of my all favorite of movies. Cinema man. is from Wolf of Wall Street. Really? It's the part where Leo looks at the camera and says, "Look, I know what you're really wondering." Is any of this even legal? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> and then that scene where it's like, and this is a, a, a this is what comes to mind all the time, where he's like, all right, does your girlfriend think you're a loser? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Are you late on your bills? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Guys, I don't want you to solve your problems with therapy. I want you to solve your problems <laughs> by getting fucking rich. Yeah! <laughs> fire yeah got me fired up yeah come on man it's a good uh there's times where that's what you have to do i felt that way when we started this business i'm like bill's coming in good you know good and you have everything uh your girlfriend still needs when you know got, got some bills coming for her too good good you have land less of fucking clients we'll solve all of that <laughs> right now yeah for real yeah i love that movie i like those two for sure what's another what about what about you what's another good leo movie for you um, let's see. My girlfriend favorite is Gangs of New York. That's a great movie too. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, let's see. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I've only seen like the first oh, 20, good. 30 minutes of it. It's good. It's good. With Brad Pitt too, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little eerie and kind of creepy. It's Tarantino. Like... What do you mean it's creepy? Tarantini. <laughs> Brad Pitt's uh, hanging out with uh, like a girl that's like, like six, 17 or some 17, shit. 17, 16, 18. <clears throat> it's, it's like, it's meant to be ambiguous about it. And it's just kind of like eerie. That whole scene, the whole sequence is meant to be like a little off-putting. Because it's like Hollywood. I think it is a little bit off-putting. I think that was kind of like representative of that to some degree. Mm, and, okay. uh, and so like while you're watching it, you're just also getting kind of creeped out. Just like a little – like you, you just don't want Brad Pitt to be a creep. You know what I'm saying? But like he's not. But you know on, what I'm Brad. saying? Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. All the way to when they get to like the trailer park and then it's just like – what, I don't forget if they're even there for but they just like can't even get the thing done and it's like maybe she's giving him the runaround, and it's just like a whole fucking thing <laughs> what why what it's one of your favorite movies uh can't believe it you bears yourself for all goddamn people you packed your lines on that it doesn't look like you packed them <laughs> You're a fucking miserable truck eight fucking witchy sounds you gonna stop the three or four I gotta have eight you're going to make a promise to yourself right now. You're going to stop drinking. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Look at me right here. Listen to me. You bet you don't get these lines right. I'm going to blow your brain down in front of your pool, motherfucker. <laughs> I mean it. Yeah, that was Leo, right? In that movie? Yeah, that's I, Leo. I think I've seen that far. I've seen yeah, that part of it. that's fire. I remember Leo going crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was fire. I, I the struggling I, actor. I yeah. fe- and then he comes it's- out and then does the line so well that the little girls like starts crying. She was like, "That yeah. was the best acting I ever saw." Yeah, <laughs> no. What I mean is that like, I felt so personal with it. Hmm. Like I'll be performing and stuff, and then I'll and then I'll miss something. Nobody catches it, but I will. Oh yeah. And then I'm going back to the hotel room like. Can't fucking believe it. Bears itself like that for those goddamn people. <laughs> eight fucking cherry patches. I got down to three or four cherry patches. I gotta have eight. <laughs> all right, you gotta pump yourself. You gotta stop drinking all this damn soda. You're done with them cherry pepsis, boy. 
dude. That's awesome. awesome. What's, uh, what's the what's the what's the best or you, what's been your okay? I want both ends of the spectrum. I want the best, funnest experience for a performance at a convention you've had, and also like the worst, sketchiest. Uh the best experience. one it gotta be like IckyCon 2023 is still my best one. Where was that at? That was in Round Rock, Texas. Round Rock 2023. You're rocking it. Yeah, and it's like with my first time I sang publicly. That was the first one. It was the best one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, what you called it? And my worst one. Uh, I could have sworn I seen I seen you sing at Limelight. No, I didn't sing. I was no. Just, yeah, I was just rapping. Oh, okay. Word. Yeah, but yeah, my worst one. Um, hmm. I'm probably gonna say uh, Anime Austin 2017. Oh, that was a while ago. I oversold myself, and nobody mean? came to the concert. Oh, how do you, how do you, how do you oversell yourself? What do you mean? Like I sold myself as all right. I'm gonna need the biggest room, <laughs> and then nobody showed up. Bit off a little more than you can chew. That's a long yeah. time ago. 2017 was, was yeah, that one of the I, first times? Yeah, that was like literally my second convention performing. Mm. That's why I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't put my name on the panel. Man, we should make it just very general. And call it otaku rap concert because that's very general. Wait, who the fuck is Deacon Rap? Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, a little different on the marketing and the branding. Yeah, it's gotten so good that when other people put otaku rap concert on the schedule, people assume it's me. Nice, nice. Damn, that's crazy. That's lit. It's a little different approach. Yeah, and you also perform here in San Antonio as well, or it's like a, some like at Limelight and uh, some of the other clubs we were talking about earlier. Uh, I don't really do club shows anymore. Uh huh. But you, you have in the past. Yeah. How was that? I guess what made you stop doing that? Um. Once it once uh, the pandemic was over, it's like I didn't really need them. Mm, okay. You know, and it's like I started getting convention after convention after convention, and it's like I don't really have time to be doing club shows. That's fucking nice. tight, bro. Plus, it's like, you know, I didn't really get that much reception from club shows. Because, uh-huh. like, you know, this is obviously not my audience. It's a little more niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. And they pay you? Are you going to pay for these uh, conventions? Uh, On and off. Sometimes? Yeah. That's lit. Anything. At least some fucking food it's, or something. It's like a, the room, hotel room and, room and the pass is already uh, taken care of. Yeah. I get a check sometimes, but not all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, what should we call it? Ooh, and then the other um, the other panel I host, Husbando Haven. Do you know what a waifu is? What is it? Waifu? Waifu. W-A-I-F-U. This is an ideal woman, correct? Yeah, it's your ideal anime woman. Got Husbando it. Uh, is your ideal anime man. There's waifu panels all the time. People, like eight people submit a panel called Waifu Wars. Nobody talk about Husbando's. So... So the Bondo is the male version? Yeah. The, the How do you husband, say it one more time? Husbando. Oh, Husbando. So it's like... Um, waifu. <laughs> waifu. Waifu and Husbando. Yeah. There so we go. I'm with panel, you. So in this panel, you, can, you can come up to the computer and show us on Google Images who your Husbando is. Okay. Or I can pick one for you. Wow. And the picking one for them. That's where you get them. Yeah. So there are some people where I'm like... So, their husband with Bruce Wayne because, like, uh, they want to fix him and they, the, she wants his money. But more importantly, she wants to fix him into the perfect guy because, look, he's rich. He's got class. He's the perfect guy. But you just need to get over that parental thing. And then there'll he's be got some trauma. <laughs> he's yeah. got some trauma. <laughs> and there'll be some guys where, like, I know they're cool. I'm like, his husband is Wolverine. Um, he doesn't have a crush on him. He just wants Wolverine as a drinking buddy. There you go. And then there are some people where it's like, you know, I know they're my friends. They know I'm joking around. Her head bondo is Shrek because she's like big green dudes. There you go. Hey. Yeah. That's so, a good one. But like uh, people will share who their head bondo is and it's usually characters whose names I can't remember. Was it from anime typically? From anime, yeah. Oh, okay. And you'll, you. you'll get a good turnout at these? Oh, oh Yeah. Always. And then um, another good one, um, one I haven't done yet is, you guys ever, you guys aren't into wrestling too much, right? No, not too much. So I know in, some of them. in the wrestling video games on the PlayStation 2, you have what's called GM mode. In GM mode, it's a storyline where um, you pick the matches and you got to have better ratings than the computer. 
And uh, in uh, my uh, panel called GM Mode, it's like fantasy football. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except whatever pay-per-view is happening, like if the Royal Rumble is in two weeks. Okay, this is who's in the Royal Rumble, who they put. Here's who we want to put. And here's how the matches we want them to go. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wrestling is blowing up really big, too. Yeah. Wrestling is bigger now than it ever had been. Yeah, I think both of those, both of those are on a seriously upward social trajectory of anime and wrestling. I think they're much more, well, maybe not much more, but much more common. And than, fantasy football. Yeah, that's another thing. Just an uptick in that. Gained a lot of popularity, a lot, more, a lot of podcasts about it, a lot more viewership, a lot of eyes and attention on it. Yeah. People talking about it. Definitely. It's Very on Netflix so. and shit. And then, um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? That's cool, though. I would do something similar with, like, 2K, or, like, whenever you would play, like, or, like, a NFL or Madden, whatever. You would be, like, the GM mode, and you would just, like, draft your players and then, like, play, like, a... Not not play the games, but just, like, have Simulate. them play a season. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody did yeah. a fantasy basketball where you uh-huh. pick your basketball teams and you draft uh, anime character to basketball teams. Okay. Yeah. And then I do Otaku Rap Party. Which is, um, let's say I have people performing with me in the concert, right? Okay. Rap party is going to be one where we invite the audience to come freestyle rap with us. Nice. Yeah. Step up. We need, we need some hot fours out of y'all. Yeah. We need some hot fours and eights. You ever have somebody come up and just like do really good? Oh, yeah. The bar senpai, that dude can freestyle forever and ever. Really? He's like one of those guys where he freestyles so well that at some point you're like, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do 30 years of Power Rangers in an hour, which is where me and my girlfriend and our friend Tara, we try to explain all 30 iterations of Power Rangers within one hour. There's 30 of them? There's 30 of them. Holy shit. In Japan, there's like over 50. Dude. That's crazy. What's your what's your, what's your favorite anime series of all time? Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, I think you mentioned that. Yu 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 Hakusho. Yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho is the greatest anime ever made. That is the hill I'm willing to die on. He'll die on that hill. Yeah, <laughs> enough, said. enough said. That's it. That's it. Done. done. And then two new ones that we haven't done yet, but we're going to be doing. Um, twenty five years of Yu Gi Oh. We basically try to explain all the Yu Gi Oh iterations within an hour. Can you do it for me in t- two minutes? <laughs> okay. And the first series. I loved Yu Gi Oh as a kid. I loved Yu Gi Oh too. Yeah. So yeah. where did you leave off on? <sighs> After the first. After like the what first happens season. at the end of season one? Seto let's, let's, let's get through that. We're at the end of season one, oh, Yugi beat Pegasus. Okay. How does he end up having to fight Pegasus? Um, so Pegasus sends him to the Shadow Realm, and because Yugi discovered that, oh, the spirit has a mind of its own, and Pegasus reads minds, I'm going to play cards and then switch to the spirit, and Pegasus can't read the spirit's mind because since the spirit is the one who's active, he doesn't know what cards are on the field. Because Pegasus, he had that Millennium Eye that allows him to read minds. Hmm. And then the last card that Yugi played before they sent him to the Shadow Realm, that ends up being the card that wins him. It was a Black Magic Ritual. And for the first time, we saw the Magician of Black Chaos. Chaos Scepter Blast. And that's how he defeats Pegasus. Damn. Fire. Okay, I remember that. Dark Magician, the fucking Blue Eyes White Dragon. I remember. I'm with you. Exodia. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And then in iteration two, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Oh, my God. We're going to take inspiration from Harry Potter. Seto Kaiba going to start a school on an island that teaches everybody how to play card games. Right. I had a, and you're gonna I had be a video so- game based on that. And you're okay. going to be sorted into different houses. If your parent donated a library, you're going to be with, uh, with the rich kids in Oblix Blue. If you were here on a Division I scholarship... You're going to be with all the other scholarship kids and raw yellow, and you're going to have an amazing experience. If you're a financial aid kid, your homeroom teacher and your cafeteria person are going to be the same person. <laughs> also, we're going to put three kids in one dorm, whereas everybody else gets their own room. Really? <laughs> Damn. But, like, depending on where you rank, if you're depending on how much money your parents um, donated, you might get your own, like, little house. Damn. Did they address this in, in the show? Uh, yeah. It's like, he's a slifer slacker. He doesn't belong in this school. Wow, that's crazy. But it's like, Chad, you are the most elite duelist in the school. You're an Arbonite Blue. You have to defeat that slifer slacker. It's crazy. The classism. 
Yeah. The classism. classism. <laughs> and then Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ds. Oh, we're going to play card games on motorcycles instead of just standing completely still on the ground. We had to switch to motorcycle duels yeah. to make it real action. That was better. Mad Max. So the plot Fast is... Fast Furious type shit. We're in the future, right? Okay. And you say Fruto, he's from the ghetto, and his friends are from the ghetto. And one friend decided to steal a few people's cards, put them in his deck, and now he's living a life of luxury with stolen cards. And his goal is, I'm going to beat him in a duel and prove to everybody that he's not the duelist he thinks he is. Hmm. He's a fake. He's a phony. A big, fat phony! <laughs> yep, Martha with you. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. My name's Yumo Tsukumo, and I love playing card games, even though I've never won a single game. But I'm going to discover this mystical artifact, and it's going to give me a dual spirit, and he's going to help me play the game, and I'm going to start winning. I never saw Arc 5, I never saw Reigns, and Rush Duel is basically for, like, small children. Was there more than one season in these iterations? Oh, yeah. Uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! had five seasons. Damn! Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX had four, but in America, we never got the fourth one. And... and What happens in the five seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! 1? Uh, let's see. The second one is Battle City. Where we discover more about the Millennium items. The uh, third one is, uh... The third one, I believe, is the Seal of Oricalcos. The fourth one is... No, no. The third one is um, the Virtual World. Where, like, oh, everyone gets trapped in the Virtual World and we got to duel our way out of it. Uh, number four is the Seal of Oricalcos. Where it's like, oh, Atlantis. And the Seal of Oricalcos that causes people to go crazy if they play this card. And then season five, we just basically see all the Pharaoh's memories play out. Did they ever get Exodia assembled? <coughs> What's his? I'm, I know he was a he was a big thing, right? He was like five right? five cards. Yeah. yeah, he gets assembled in the first episode. Oh, and then in episode three or four, somebody's like, "Hey, Yugi, because they're on a ship, right, headed to Duelist Kingdom. Hey, mm-hmm. Yugi, can I see your Exodia cards? Yeah, sure. Be careful with them. Okay." I'm just gonna say goodbye to Ignodia! That was on purpose? Yeah. What a prick. Weevil cheats. What a prick. Yeah. I, I bet that guy has a bruising coming. He's cruising for a bruising. And then in season uh season two, there's a guy with three sets of Ignodia in his deck, and Yugi figures out a way to defeat Ignodia. So he, like, he comes back later on after the cards are lost? No. Okay. This is a whole nother guy with uh with Ignodia. Oh, so he has his own Exodia cards? Yeah, and he had three sets of Exodia. What the hell? This is in, in and the future. And Yugi's like, you rely on Exodia so much that you didn't think to pack your deck with any other cards, and now it's going to cost you. You have no defenses. Oh, I'm going to summon an Exodia head in defense mode. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. Activate Chain Destruction. When you summon a monster, Chain Destruction destroys that monster and any copy you have of that monster in your deck and in hand and graveyard. Oh, so now you cannot summon Exodia. Oh, he found a way to defeat Exodia. And now let's end this duel. Yeah, the problem was that Scene. Exodia wasn't, like, logistically playable in any game. Like, you could, in, the, in the actual... Where it, yeah, where now there's so much support for it that it's like, you know... Uh, there's, um, there's a term, one-turn kill, where you just keep playing cards in the first turn. Like, oh, get to draw this card. This card, one card to draw more cards. And it's like, Exodia. Yeah. And your opponent doesn't even get a chance to go. That's the best feeling in the world <laughs> when you play Yu-Gi-Oh. Did you get into, a, I guess, Pokemon? It's like in card game, to, like, speak. Did you play Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, I did, or like, I didn't Magic play the Gathering? I did Pokemon card game or Magic the Gathering. Well, here's the thing. I'm not a virgin, so I'm not going to play Magic the Gathering. Okay. Um, <laughs> Whoa. I love, I no love fighting that. words, boy. <laughs> I love Magic the Gathering, but it's cool. No, 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 no. Someone who plays Magic the Gathering is going to say, excuse me, but I have good personal hygiene and I shower every day. I'm not going to play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> okay. So, there's like uh, common, there's common tropes against each other. Yeah. It, it, the, the trope right now that 
uh, people who play Yu-Gi-Oh are the assholes of card game players. Okay. There's so many videos where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, let's play Digimon. I just haven't known. You're supposed to play it like this. What? Let's play Pokemon. I activate my... There are no trap cards here. What? Let's play Magic the Gathering. Dude, you're only good at one game. Mm. So... <laughs> The assholes of the card game world. <laughs> Essentially. Never never would have thought it. Never would have thunk it. Yeah. But it's like, no, everybody's nice, really. We just have small assholes and stereotypes on the internet. Of course. And it's like the stereotype on the internet is that if you drive a Subaru, you probably vape. I think if you're over the age of 18, you probably vape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when did vaping become so popular? In the last 10 years, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the same cycle of like the anime and vaping. the wrestling and the fantasy football. But Julie got and bad. Jules got really big. Vaping is supposed to be an alternative to help you get off of smoking cigarettes. It's not supposed to help you smoke more. Yeah, for real, it's crazy. It's crazy nowadays because I remember I remember seeing a, a commercial. I had to be like t- in my ten, twelve teenage years yeah. ballpark and I remember seeing a commercial for I think it was called Blue it was like yeah. a blue e-cigarette right yeah. and it was yeah. like there was like a it's not smoke it's just water vapor it's not smoke it's just water vapor that was like their commercial you know yeah. what I'm saying and that was like a long long time ago Yeah. but then that I don't think that really gained a whole lot of popularity but then fucking Jules came in and started giving it to us man we were fucking loving the Jules and the fucking Vooses and now the fucking geek bars and we're just loving it man <laughs> now the zins are popping. Bubble. The zins are popping. Keep it coming, it, it, it's like a, it's like cocaine, but just like in a small. I mean, we do coffee, right? Coffee is like a huge drug. Yeah, let me tell you something yeah. about cocaine. Uh, how much? How Hell much, of a drug. First of all, no, no, let me tell y'all about cocaine. Mm-hmm. How familiar? How good are y'all at chemistry? I, I did well in school, but I couldn't really remember. Okay. I took pre. You look chemistry. at the chemical makeup of uh, cocaine, and mm-hmm. you look at the chemical makeup of uh, sugar. Their chemical makeup is eerily similar, except mm-hmm. cocaine has five nitrogens in it. So when you really think about it, cocaine is just watered down sugar. Hmm. It's easier to get off of cocaine than it is to get off sugar. Hmm. I see what you're saying. Oh, think about yeah, it. Yeah, sugar is crazy. Food. Sugar definitely a drug. is in everything. Like mm. McDonald's chicken nuggets have sugar in them. The bread's got sugar in it. You got to stay away from that place. That place is bananas. Sugar in the bread? What? Sugar in the bread at McDonald's? No, I said sugar in the chicken nuggets. He <laughs> said sugar in the bread. I bet the sugar in the bread. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> there if there's is. sugar in the bread at McDonald's, but like, can anyone fact check for that? For I would us? bet there, there is. is. I've seen a documentary about it. Yeah, I remember hearing that stat or hearing that that that. I guess that phrase and associating that with that. I was like, damn, even that's got that. Or even their salads have sugar and shit in them. I think it was on the super. It was probably on the Super Size Me documentary. That's what I think. That was a big documentary back in the day. Is there sugar in the bread at McDonald's? It's like, well, hold on, let's check your location. Who's asking this? <laughs> Who? Where, where are you asking this from? Huh? Regular bun contains sugar. Yeah, I'm sure there's a little bit of sugar, natural sugars in it. Carbs, of yeah, course. Yeah, there's everything. But I'm sure there's added sugars to everything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm sure there's. there's it's crazy to think about food. I was thinking about this the other day, and I've had this thought being reoccurring for years. But it's like the idea of drugs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like drugs. It's like anything that alters your state is a drug. You know, if we just like branch it out to like the widest variety that we can, the largest mm-hmm. umbrella, it's like food, sex, fucking arguing, complaining. They're all drugs. You know what I'm saying? They're all mood alterers. I was about to say, who likes arguing? Now I remembered, oh yeah, Instagram. <laughs> People love arguing. People love being right or like trying to make someone else seem small or stupid or whatever. You know what I'm saying? People oh, have yeah. their... Something that gives them a feeling or alters their current state. They're like, oh, I don't like the way I feel, so I want to change the way I feel. And the, the way that they change the way they feel can come in you know, infinite amounts of topic, forms. Go back to YouTube. Oh, yeah. We're going to listen to another one of my songs. You be to be. Run it. So Mommy Dommy is the number one recommendation. Yeah. Where is this? What, what is this next song going to be? I've been Deacon Rap. Oh, yeah. Deacon Rap. While we're here, I guess yeah, we're gonna we're about to find your your Insta or your you, brought, YouTube. Uh, drama at the con. Oh no, drama at the con. Is this just a uh, or is Deacon Rap your handle for all your socials, yeah, YouTube, it, and all that? Yeah, I right, typed the first one. This is uh, I, that's it. I'm expecting yeah. fire. Oh, uh, you guys don't have YouTube Premium? Custom Inc. No, we don't. Actually, I, no, I do sir. have it. Actually, I do have it. I got a trial. I got a trial ready. <laughs> we're, we're waiting for me whenever I'm ready. I've got it for like two, three more weeks. Is this inspired by true events? Yeah. 
What's the uh, what's the the screenshots we have here? Oh, that was a conversation with a real person. Yeah, is is there and, drama within the conversation? Yeah. <laughs> how much how much are you willing to disclose about this drama? <laughs> so, yeah. The guitar right here is so nice. That guitar is hitting in this hook hey. right here, bro. <laughs> did Nick do? Did Nick do that? Guitar's hitting, boy. Dude, God damn, that guitar's <laughs> hitting, son. God. my recommendation this is a song y'all should listen to <laughs> this, this is, is the one drama at the con Where's for it? sure that's my recommendation shut the fuck up dude I left some waste to this part this is some... it's cash shit yeah, it's just gas. <laughs> Did you do the beat? You made the beat? Yeah. Dude, nice. yes. Yeah. That's fucking so. gas. So yeah, how much how much of that or how much of that story are you willing to disclose? Where where, where so, did you know that the come part from? like I'm guilty by default, I didn't assa- assault Mac and I ain't a creep. So in twenty twenty two, this uh group um accused me of being a creep to one of their members. And I'm like, What? And they're like and then at an event, a group of what? Like a like a, like a musical oh, I, group? Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Oh, okay, you. okay, heard. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. One group of people. Maid Cafe <laughs> decided, oh, Deacon Rab was being a creep to one of our members, you know, and I got, I had to be escorted from, uh, ha- from uh, Otaku Night uh, a month later. And it's like to this day, I still don't know what I did. I was gonna say, what's the? It was just a, there was just a blanket accusation. And then at Weed Bus. Which is now we're in December. This happened in uh, on, uh, October. I got escorted off. I was asked to leave an event in November. Now we're in December. Um, according to somebody who was there, all they complained about was how sorry they feel for my girlfriend. And then, uh, Coloss- and then here we are nine months later. Um, some uh, apparently I was at Colossal Con talking shit about somebody hmm. when I was at work and didn't go to Colossal Con. Uh, and then in January, an ex friend was like, "Hey, buddy!" I'm like, "Don't hey, buddy, me? What? Remember that Wonderland shit? How you ditched me to hang with Dode Crew because they thought it was Wonderland? Oh, bro, like it's not a big, we're not a big deal, dude. You would, uh, we would make eye contact, and he would avoid me. And mm-hmm. he's like, "Dude, I didn't see you." I'm like, "You even make eye contact?" He's like, "Let's hug it out." I'm like, "No, I'm backing up." No, he's like, "This close," and I just push him away. I'm like, "I don't want to hug you," and he's like. You fucking put your hand on me? I'm like, dude, I don't want to hug you. And he's like, fucking asshole, right? He told people I assaulted him. Oh, Jesus Louises. And then now we're in May of 2020, May of this year. I get a message that I'm getting removed from a Discord group because apparently I was talking shit about somebody at a con that I wasn't even at. Hmm. And they heard rumors that I assaulted somebody at IckyCon. And I try to explain the situation. And then they're like, either way. Uh, we see that you call your girlfriend a bitch, and that makes us uncomfortable and make me uncomfortable to the point where I don't want to like be around you. And right after I put, 
if that's the case, why can't you tell my girlfriend? And then I get, uh, then I get uh, blocked. And then there was a rumor that I was cheating on my girlfriend. Do you call your girlfriend a bitch? Oh yeah, was there like an instance they were talking, like uh, referring to? Whenever I tell the story of how we met. I'd be like, so yeah, we were talking about Eminem, and this bitch had the audacity to say that the opening to Rap God was mumble rap. And from then on, I was like, oh, hell no, how dare you say that about Eminem? He's not a and mumble rap, yada, yada, because I was a big Eminem dick writer back then. <laughs> and here we are now. Love the honesty. So colloquially, so, in a story, calling your partner this bitch, it's hilarious. It's a shock factor. It's a joke. Yeah, here's the thing. You know, she's in on a joke. And, you know, she understands that, you know, as an Eminem meat writer, you know, and plus, you know, we both find it funny. So keep in mind, this has been going on for good almost two years, right? Uh-huh. Out of all these people involved... Nobody wants to tell my girlfriend, send her a DM saying, hey, your boyfriend did this to the maid cafe. Hey, your boyfriend did this at Colossal Con. Hey, your boyfriend cheated. Nobody wants to tell her anything. Mm, they're, just, they're just talking shit. So that's how I know y'all are full, more, are full of more shit than a porta potty at a home remodeling. Like, everyone full of shit. Mm, yeah, a porta potty at an ACL. Yes, porta potty at ACL, <laughs> yes. So that's why I'm like, oh, I should make a song about this. Because then Kendrick Lamar and Drake thing happened, and Kendrick Lamar dropped Meet the Grams. And this is basically my version of Meet the Grams. Keep Start it... calling them out. Yeah. So that being said, it's like uh, Max was the only one I was going to name drop because he's the only one where it's like, you know, I don't give a fuck. But everyone else, like, don't go to the con because of the owner, but go to this one that was run by a pervert. Anime Monstery... It had the shittiest convention owner I've ever seen, but everyone still goes to it, right? Whenever someone else tells me, hey, don't go to the con because of the owner doing this and that, the first thing they ask is, do you go to Anime Monstery? And if they say yes, in my mind, I'm like, you don't give a fuck about the community. You're mm. just hopping and following a trend. They're not real. They ain't really about their life. Drama at the con. It's yeah. real. It happens. That's a banger. Dude, free my dog. Over here with allegations, getting cut yeah, out. People of, talking bullshit. People cut, oh, yeah. cutting you out of discords and conventions. Yeah. And it's like, come on, <coughs> What are we talking about? And what the thing is, it's like, you know, there's really, I don't know why me. Like, I really don't. Um, Might be part of the costs of standing out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's very possible. One thing that um that someone said is that, you know, one thing about me is that there's no story. What do you mean? Here's what I mean. Oh, be careful with that person because yada, yada. There's no real story. Like, I never did nothing to yeah, nobody. So I never, like, so. Yeah, it's all just, it's all bullshit allegations. And there may be somebody who doesn't like me and what I do, and they're trying to do something to get me pushed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I really don't know what I did to this person. Maybe it's just because I'm just doing me and they have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this, is that keep doing you, and eventually everybody's going to move on to something else. It's just like the school shootings. Every week there's a new one to a point where it's like, oh, I guess this is the norm now. This is going on. Yeah, because like if you watch South Park, you guys ever watch South Park, right? On the on the school shooting episode, there's a school shooting every day, and only one parent is making a big deal about it, and all the other parents are like, "What the big deal?" Hmm. You know. So it's like you know, eventually people are gonna move on, move on to something else, and just like with the whole drama at the convention, every weekend there's drama about somebody, and everyone sort of forgot about the last person. Now they're focused on a new person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's important to. Have that as your north star. It's like just focus on the true expression of you. You know the oh, authentic version so. of yourself, and that's it. Seems like I said, you do people. you, mm-hmm. yes. And you know, eventually, people are going to move on. And if you wait long enough, there's going to be a whole gen- new generation of people who aren't even aware 
nor will they really care. It's just like anime monstry. All the shit happened in 2017, which here we are in 2024, there's a whole new generation of Congoers who either don't know, or they don't care enough to really, like, um, they don't care enough about it to really take it seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just having fun at the convention. Or, yeah, or let it affect their outlook on what, Very what much it so. is. Yeah. You know, because a lot of us, we had a good experience, and then this happened, where new people, they're having a good experience, and hearing about stuff that happened before they were going, it's like... Almost irrelevant. Yeah. Almost irrelevant yeah, to their you, experience. You really gotta, like, almost pay me to care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but it's just like about something in the past. Like you want me to judge somebody about something that happened seven years ago? Like you want me yeah. to like care and you want me to like treat this person differently and and create this like weird energy that I have to like change? Oh, na- I'm naturally kind to everybody. Why can't I just be kind to this person? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Plus, it's like karma's gonna get everybody. You That's the other I mean. thing, yeah. Like, uh, like the maid cafe, right? You know, I'm um, here. I am thinking I'm gonna get canceled, but I still do me. And six months in, six months later, I'm having debatably the best year of my career, and they end up having to break up in order to avoid a federal investigation. Damn, this is a cafe, you said? Yeah, maid cafe is not an actual restaurant. It's like a group. Or, it, I don't know how to explain it, but anyway. Got you, got you. Um, so. Basically, there was, like, embezzlement and fraud and giving a minor alcohol. I don't mean, like, under – I don't mean, like, a 15-year-old. I mean, like, you know, 19 – you know, legal legal age is 21. They're giving to a 19, 20-year-old. Um, lots of, like, employee uh, – making a lot of labor laws and, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, by the way, karma's going to get everybody. Yes. So, don't be mean to people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you be an authentic expression of yourself. And, and don't be an asshole. Yes. And don't smoke meth. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. No. Do you know what that does to your teeth? I've heard. Yeah. I've heard stories. Gotcha, yeah. But other than that, um, you said that you liked the Power Rangers versus Frieza. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the one. I yeah. liked the, I liked listening to that one and then the Green Ranger one as yeah. well. I think How I familiar one. are you with uh, with Dragon Ball? I'm not super familiar. I think I started falling off after like Majin Buu. Gotcha. But I, I was definitely familiar, like, from Frieza and beforehand, a little bit before Frieza, up into, yeah, up, gotcha. up until, like, Majin Buu. So, Power Rangers versus Frieza. Um, who do you think is doing the Frieza voice? I don't know. I, I thought that, that might have been, like, a clip. You got someone to do that? You know how it says featuring Linda Young on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that her? Google her. Google Linda Young. Linda Young. Because, yeah, I saw that there was a feature on it. I was like, is there going to be another verse on here? I don't think there's another verse on here. But, okay, because I, th- I thought the Frieza was, like, an actual, like, clip. From, like, the show. Is that what they... Did, did, does Frieza ever say those words at all? Or that was your own Go bar or lyrics you came up with? Type in Linda Young. I want you to see this right quick because you got to see this to believe it. I don't have trouble believing it myself. <laughs> yeah, she, that's her. Does she voice Frieza? She's the voice of Frieza. What the fuck? Yeah. And she did your song? Yeah. How? How'd y'all come into contact? So... At Hill Country Comic Con 2022, she was doing autographs, uh-huh. and it's like I really wanted to meet her because she voices uh, Gen Kai in Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay, so she has multiple yeah. characters that and she does. My third uh, time watching Yu Yu Hakusho, it was it was me trying to cope with the fact that my grandma died, mm. and I didn't really know how to handle that, so I just watched Yu Yu Hakusho. And she was basically like the grandma in that show. Oh, wow. Okay. And so when I meet her, as soon as I see her and she uh, uses the voice, for the first time in my life, I start grieving the fact that my grandma's gone. Mm. And I start just trauma dumping on her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this is at the Comic-Con show? This is at, yeah, this is at Hill Country Comic-Con. Yeah. And then six months later, I see her in Houston. And I asked her, I know, I asked her, hey, would you ever be interested in doing a rap song? She's like, I don't even know any rappers. I'm like, do you know who Snoop Dogg is? I'm like, who's that? She doesn't know who Snoop Dogg is? Yeah. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So I made her a playlist of different rap songs and for her to practice with. And then I wrote the rap and she came to the studio the next time she was in San Antonio and we just laid down the vocals and with Nick, the thing. Of, with, with by ourselves. Uh yeah, I would by myself. 
Dude, that's yeah, so Nick, cool. Nick had uh, this friend named Pablo, and Pablo had yeah. a studio up there for yeah. Nick, and I was using Pablo's studio. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, I know Pablo. We're going to try to get him in here, actually. That's Dude. It. That's badass, bro. So, so I guess. So I guess. Did she? Was that a quote from the show? Like her lyrics? No, I just wrote it. I okay, tried to okay. write as Frieza. I tried yeah, to yeah. really embody the character. Dude, I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, so I, like you, you heard all the lyrics, right? I heard both of them for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> if you heard all the whole song, you realize I'm telling a story. Uh huh. Yeah, you're you fighting, right? Yeah. Gasp as I awake, puzzled in a daze. Body feels broken, yet it's all just a grade. Looking at my friends as their bodies have decayed, let's go back a couple days how we got to this place. Then I tell the story of how all this happened, right? Mm-hmm. Rita and Zed, yeah, you should have seen their face. They were filled with fear because someone had invaded. They had no hope in their death, just awaited. Zordon got a message from... Um, uh, that's just awaited? Then we got a message on the viewing globe. Alpha hit play, and I heard her say, she said, I am Lord Frieza, ruler of the universe. Right? Which is a very Lord Frieza thing to say. Yeah. And then, Zordon sent a message to the island Animaria Lightspeed Rescue and the Space Patrol Delta. Animaria is the island where all the Wild Force Rangers are. Lightspeed Rescue is, of course, Lightspeed Rescue. Space Patrol Delta, that's where the SPD Rangers are, right? There was a time warp, and a girl named Jen said our only hope was the White Beacon. Jen is from Time Force. And she said she had a friend, and his name was Andros. He's from, uh, he's from In Space. So, yeah, we all the Power Rangers are coming together like in Avengers Endgame. Yeah. And that's what's going on. That's so tight, bro. I love that. That's awesome. And you got, you got the feature, too, from the actual voice of the... Yeah. Uh, that, that's why I thought it was a clip from the show, because it's literally yeah. fucking her. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That's it, it. Here's the thing. Power Rangers had collaborations with everything. There, they, uh, there's a comic where they meet Godzilla. There's a comic with the Ninja Turtles. There's a comic with the Justice League. A comic with the Avengers. There just hadn't been a comic with Dragon Ball yet. Wow, that's tight. What, how was the recording process? Did she, did she kill it in the booth? Was oh, it a, she did. Was it a one take or what? <laughs> it was, we did a couple takes to make sure if we could have done one take, honestly. <laughs> but we did a couple takes because it's like, you know, I wanted double layer vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be the first time people hear actual freeze a rap. So I'm yeah. like, what is the most gangster song I think of? And I'm hearing Hail Mary by Tupac. And Hail I tried Mary, to... <laughs> come with me. Hail Mary, run, quick, see. I ain't the pushers, don't know, push me. Revenge is like a Swedish mm. joy. I try to take, I try to replicate those vocal effects. I try to replicate those effects, put them on Frieza, and not make Frieza sound like she's rapping like Tupac, make it sound like Tupac trying to rap like Frieza. Okay, there you go. And now we're the direction I went with her mixed and mastering. Dude, that's so cool. That's badass. Yeah. <laughs> that's lit. Yeah. And then as far as Meet the Green Ranger, I just made a generic Power Ranger song to uh, to go with uh, the Green Ranger costume. Yeah, is that like I the, literally made it for a costume reveal. Is that the walkout, like the walkout song, like the oh, first yeah. song you perform? Mm-hmm. It's got to be the first song you perform. That's the walkout song. That's the intro. Welcome to the show. No, the intro is... Huh? Who that? My turn. Yeah. Down. Time to meet the Green Ranger. Then the music plays from San Antonio, Texas. Weighing in at 165 pounds. He's your 24th favorite rapper. Deacon Rap. And then at that point, you hear, wait, 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 more of in time. And that's. And then you're jumping in. So when I'm cosplayed as the Green Ranger, that's my intro. Uh huh. When I'm cosplayed as Seto Kaiba, my intro is the Seto Kaiba theme. And now we hear the mix where now I'm going into my song about Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. That's nice. So you do Seto, Seto Kaiba as well? Performance? I have 28 cosplays. Oh, yes. Let's go. I even made a song <laughs> about go. that too. The numbers. I got, numbers. 20, I got 27 cosplays. Oh, God, I got 27 cosplays. <laughs> my God, I got 27 cosplays. Oh, God, I got 27 <laughs> cosplays. That's hard. <laughs> That's fine. That's, that's fine. hard. I love that. That's that's yeah. it. What was the song about? What's your favorite? My favorite. Two questions. Sorry, two questions. <laughs> My favorite is gonna be Krillin. Really? 
I get to be you have bald. A bald cap. <laughs> I love being bald, and it's so comfortable. And I can talk like this everywhere I go, and everyone's gonna be okay with it. Let me put it to you like this: People always ask me, Krillin, when Frieza came to Earth, everyone was unsure, but you were the only one who knew it was Frieza. How did you know? And honestly, and ladies, you can agree with me. Once you've had a man inside of you, you know when he's coming. <laughs> they get some big pop. That better get a pop. That better get fucking it pops does. for days. That's over red and bocker pops. Here's some, here's some poetry for you. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Oh, God, you're just dead. And I am too. It's over my head, damn it. People like think, people think that Goku or Vegeta are the best Dragon Ball character. I disagree. I'm the best Dragon Ball character. Why? I got Android 18. I wiped her. She doesn't age. Bulma's gonna get old. And wrinkly. And pretty soon. Some of the body functions aren't gonna work anymore. But I'm gonna be 80. And Android 18, you know, baby-making body functions are still going to function just as good as they did when she was 25. So, therefore, I'm the best Dragon Ball character. You got a hell of a story, Crush. Krillin. You got a hell of a story, Crush. Krillin. I'm sorry, I dabble in Dan comedy as well. Yeah, so that was like, that was like a, your own, like... Skit or like your own like a uh, take, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like uh, let's see with stand up comedy. Um, do you guys uh, do stand up comedy or you guys uh, watch it or no? Yeah, I dabble. My favorite is Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac, Bernie Mac, in my opinion, is the best stand up ever. Damn, that's what's up. That's, that's a hot take. It's a hot goat. Let me put it like this: Sex is a mutual agreement. I'm gonna give you some dick. You gonna give me some pussy. I'm going to butt like one nut, you're going to butt like six. Sounds like you're getting the bigger, better end of the deal, right? So why the fuck am I paying your rent for? <laughs> I ain't never seen pussy with a meter on it. <laughs> or the other one, it's like, I'm tired of the bullshit, man. I'm tired of the bullshit. No, I'm tired of, I'm tired of these motherfuckers where every week they got a nail done, new outfit, hair done, but the refrigerator is always empty. <laughs> and you see them, you're like, hey, uh, you looking a little weak. And they be like, yeah. I look good, though. Oh, these dumb motherfuckers love to look good, don't they? <laughs> the lights ain't pit. The lights aren't on, but they look good. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah. Thousand dollar bag with no cash in your purse. Uh, yeah. And this one, this one, this one. I wish I could have a fake funeral. Just so I'd be laying there. Somebody don't like show up and be like, the fuck are you doing at my funeral? <laughs> Don't know let anybody. Don't let nobody show up to owe me money now. <laughs> you know, I be laying there. I see him. I grab the hand like, "You got my money." <laughs> what the fuck are you doing if you ain't got my money? Put me on the grave. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Those are good bits. Yeah, like uh, one of my um, one of my stand up jokes is like, uh, let's see, are there any Dallas Cowboy fans? You guys fans of the Cowboys? No, no. Oh, like so you, finally, somebody who's not a fan of losers. <laughs> yeah. Let me put you that like this. Tony Romo, a lot of, uh, one thing I noticed that when people get married early in the career, like super early in their career, like in their sports career, people are like, oh, don't do that. You know, they're going to divorce you, yada, yada. Tony Romo knew then that marriage was the only way he was going to get a ring being on the Cowboys. Got him. <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not messing with y'all. Even the National Weather Service, if you look on their website, according to the National Weather Service, whenever there's a tornado watch in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the safest place to be is AT&T Stadium. Why? They predict there probably won't be a touchdown there. Oh, <laughs> Dak Prescott, right? Dak Prescott. Dak is the highest paid quarterback in the NFL right now. Highest paid quarterback. How? Really how? You want to know how? I'll show you oh, how. God. This is how he became the high-paid quarterback. He did a lot of this. Okay. <laughs> love the pantomime. I love the mimes. You know, forget the Diddy party. I wonder what that Jerry Jones party is like. <laughs> the Jerry party. <laughs> you guys can probably cut that part out. That's but... okay. I love it. Do you do that on stage? Do you perform? 
I haven't performed that. I just did that. That's that just something that comes up in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was off the top. How that does he get that money? I, I talk about it all the time. Dak Prescott is like not a uh, – what is he doing there still? Yeah. He's, he's got to get traded. You know, I love Mark Cuban because, like, every so often, uh, like, Mark Cuban oh, told me – camera real quick. I you can't... got a what? There you go. I'll move the camera for him. Mark Cuban told a story one time where it's like – he once went into the locker room and asked everyone, hey, you get paid this week? You get paid this week? They fucking play like it. Yeah. And they lost. Really? Yeah. It's hilarious. It's Mark Cuban? <laughs> Mark Cuban, who That's owned the Dallas up. Mavericks. <laughs> no, right. So, hey, man, you're, uh, your, your check went through, right? Like, they fucking play like it, boy! <laughs> <laughs> it was after they lost he said that? Um, no, they no. He said that, and then they lost. It was like oh, in the wow. finals or some shit. Play- I don't remember when. I just saw that story on Club Shay Shay. If there was ever a time to do it, it was probably in the finals yeah. when, they're, <laughs> when they're down four or three one. Yeah. Either way, trying to snap a, a losing streak. Yeah, yeah, but that's how I think. Or because I guess we were talking about, or like you, like you have different cosplay, and then I guess within those cosplays, and also with your panelings and like the the events mm-hmm. and the stuff that you do at the uh, conventions, you have to you you've also incorporated like your own comedic, like oh, yeah. tones throughout everything. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So it's like yeah, it's very like stand up comedy driven, or like at least, at least like kind of like crossed over overlay with the like uh, trying to find the c- commonalities and like the nuances of the things yeah. that are happening in like in the show, but like the overarching themes that are happening in the show, like yeah. Krillin's. Krillin's wife not, yeah. not aging and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like this. Um, how familiar are y'all with wrestling? I knew I was definitely pretty big into it when it was like Kane, Undertaker, Triple H, and The Rock was new. And then I kind of fell off. And then that's that's pretty much where I was at. I know John Cena. Let me let me tell you about the John Cena era. The John Cena era. That's what I grew up on, and that's where a lot of my entertainment stuff came from. Because during the John Cena era. I can say I come from the school of ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression taught me things like, leader the slut. You should run when you see her. I shook her hand last week and it gave me gonorrhea. Another great ruthless aggression promo. Rey Mysterio, you're a boy in a man's world. And now I'm a man that loves to play with boys. No, 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 no. Pause. No, no, no. What I mean is like, you're a boy. And I'm a man, and I would love to manhandle. No, 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 no. Look, Ray Mysterio, tonight you get to in with me on top of you, holding one leg up, and no, 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 get out of here so I can kick your butt. Right? Hilarious. Great promo with like. Was Johnny that. Cena? Or John Cena? Who's no, that was that? Kurt Angle. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. But yeah, great, uh, great things like that are what taught me like com- comedy yeah, and yeah. timing, comedic and, timing, delivery, and yeah, delivery, especially delivery. Yeah, and you know, like that's one thing I tell people is that like you know, I'm not the best rapper, but I am the most JDM riding, Falcon sword flying, cosplay wearing, woo, nothing like rapping, woo, otaku rapping, son of a bitch, and hip hop entertainment, woo. Come on now, fire! Yeah, yeah, they don't got that. Wear that Th- shit, that's, boy. That's delivery right there. That's yeah. like that's gas. That's hype. Uh, so what is now three forty seven? Do y'all have any other questions? Anything? I guess my one thing was gonna ask: Who else is in your like in your niche? Like who's also in the nerd rap game that like you're there Nabot, look up to or Nab- talk about? Not that I look up to, but uh-huh. like someone that I rap with. There's Nabot Tyler in Houston. Okay. There's Dexto Mani here in San Antonio. Let's go. There's Big Exodia in Houston, which shout out to Big Exodia. You're my favorite. Big Exodia. Um, there's, uh, there's uh, Geekster the Super Nerd in Mississippi. There's uh, Aaron Ollie in, in Georgia. Um, and people that I haven't met yet, um, there's Megaran, who um, he's active in uh, AEW. He makes music for a lot of AEW. Um, What's that? All elite wrestling. Oh wow! Okay. And then Richie Branson single handedly brought Toonami back. Like Richie Branson wondered, "Nerdy rappers, he got a Lamborghini and a Nissan GTR." So it's like he's doing pretty good. He's open. Yeah, and there's like a whole lot of others. Dude, that's awesome. That's badass. Who's like some? Who's like the your most? If you could pick, if you could have one person like on a track, like on a feature, or you want to do a song with, who's who's the one? Uh, Richie Branson or, um, well, no, Meg Thee Stallion because she okay. <laughs> Smart. That's a businessman. That's a business decision right there. I love that. Yeah. Meg, because, like, she's in that category. Like, 
I personally don't really agree with it, but she's in that cat just because it's like, you know, name one of her anime songs where she doesn't talk about her genitals. That's a tough ask. I can't name one song. I can't. <laughs> it's all genital <laughs> talk. Does. It's all genitals. Uh, like Body. Uh-huh. There's Body. There's WAP. There's, uh, um, let's see. Uh, I'm a hot girl. I do mm-hmm. hot shit. You know, Savage. Yeah. The, the song with Chance the Rapper, where she's talking about licking the balls. <laughs> if she don't lick the balls, she ain't really wifey. Make this alien. Bars. Oh, and I get money. I'm a star, <laughs> star, star, star. So, yeah, make the stallion. Yeah. Um, That'd be tight. That's the move. That's the move. Great answer. That's the fucking <laughs> great answer. It's a green light. That's the one. Yes, man. Well, I guess what's your next convention and where can people find you? Uh, SumiCon, which is next weekend. Okay, it's let's in go. Houston, Texas. Houston, SumiCon. Yeah. And then in December, I may or may not be at Eshi Expo in San Marcos. Okay, oh, what's up? Nice. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And as far as where you can find me, just type Deacon Rap, D E A C O N R A P, no space, everywhere. Deacon Rap, YouTube, Instagram, all that. YouTube, Instagram, Pornhub, OnlyFans, Tinder, <laughs> Grinder, everywhere. <laughs> Feet, the feet fam. <laughs> yeah, let me, all let the me, hands. Let, yeah, let me put it to you like this. What some what people don't realize is that like on Pornhub, they pour, they pay more than YouTube does. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah. They got more money than Disney, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we can find you on Pornhub? No, not Disney. <laughs> That's a yeah, good I, one, though. Not yeah, yet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think I'm porn hub material. You gotta cross the line. That's. I know, but it's like I don't think I'm up there yet. You're cl- <laughs> you're clearly a star. There's yeah, a niche for you. No, no, I'm popular. I'm, when when Eminem and Snoop Dogg acknowledge my presence, then you can say I'm a star. Right now, I'm just popular. I forgot. I feel that, bro. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, no, it. How should I put this? If I could, do, if I could do it Rhea Ripley, then I'll do it. No questions asked. But with anyone else, it's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not exactly body quality for Pornhub. And ready. according to my girlfriend, I'm a subby sub with extra mayo, so. <laughs> Cold cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Well, yeah. well fuck think, yeah, man. Uh, What's up? I think that on your vision board, you should have Megan the Stallion and Dommy Mommy and just... You know, attract those that into your life. That that opportunity could come around. Manifest. Yeah, you got the voice from Frieza. That's pretty fucking tight, bro. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, I for uh, Frieza is not a, the only voice actor in my music. Really? Like if you look at side characters, Chuck Huber voices a lot of anime characters, and in my Gohan song, I have the actual voice actor of Gohan. No, you do not. I do. Get the fuck out of here. That's fucking tight. I do. <laughs> the, the Teen Gohan is like my favorite Dragon Ball character probably of all time. Just when he, when he beats Cell. So. That's like my favorite, like one of my favorite episodes. You heard my song, What You Gonna Do, right? No, I don't think so. You haven't? Yo, type it in, Deacon Rap, What You Gonna Do. Gotta do it on the buzzard as we as we get, close it down. Was there anything else that you wanted to plug? Yeah, anything else you want to talk about or any other, I guess, any new music or any, uh, I guess we talked oh, about yeah. your conventions coming um, up. At SumiCon, I'm gonna drop my Doctor Who song, I'm the Doctor. New song, I'm the Doctor coming out, yeah. SumiCon. Gotta run, I gotcha. I'm running from Chewbacca's lookalike on a bike. They all know what I'm like. Genocide and history. That uh, Deacon Rap, what you gonna do? And this is the one with Gohan on it? Yeah. Dude, that's badass. How'd you come into this character? Or how'd you meet this guy? Oh, um... Uh, you typed it wrong. It's what you, not what you. What? So, you? her name is Stephanie Nadoni, and she hit me up. After uh, the Linda Young song happened. The second Dude, one. Let's second go. One. More beginning, more. That's so tight. Fire. Go on. Let it go. It is not a sin to fight for the right cause. There are those who work alone. And that's Teen Gohan, yeah? Yeah, drawn at the Green Ranger. I know how you feel, Gohan. You're gentle. You do not like to hurt. Please drop the restraint. Protect the life I love. And the song was inspired, I guess, from from that portion of the yeah. series. And that's her. Yeah. What you gonna do when the yards are stacked? No more time for talk. No more turning back. What you gonna do when the yards are stacked? What you gonna do? Oh. What you gonna do when you're back? Put your hands to warm up.
Did you make the beat too? Yeah. Dude, the beat's lit. <laughs> Do you perform this song as well? We performed it together. Really? Yeah, at Bacon. Dude, yeah, you were crazy. Yeah, was it going up or what? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> I can crazy. imagine. That's crazy. It was the most popular panel that weekend. Dude, fucking rocking. This is a banger, dude. Like, we gotta check this shit out. This is going nuts. What you gotta do? <laughs> <laughs> dude, going crazy. Gas. <laughs> Gas. Yeah. It sounds going crazy. Dude, you're shredding right here, dude. <laughs> Was it a similar recording experience? Was she killing it? it? Yeah, very. That's fire, dude. The music is legit. Thanks. That's badass, man. That's so cool. I love that. I absolutely fucking love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, and like the ability, or like just like the crossing a pass with these people, and like oh, the, yeah. getting these voice actors and being doing what you're doing, expressing yourself fully and authentically. That's fucking, it's awesome, bro. I I'm trying, that. man. Yeah, man, that's it. That's all we're that's all we're trying to do. At least you're doing it. You know what I'm saying? Some people never go the go whole, whole life without doing what you're doing. To you know what I'm saying? Well, it's like this. I learned a te- I knew what I wanted to do in my life when I was ten years old. You yeah. know, I got lucky. That's blessed. Whereas other people, you know, they could be on their death day, like um. Colonel Sanders didn't know he wanted to do chicken until he was like 78. Mm-hmm. So. Never know. He needs to keep going. That's very true. Keep going. Dude, that's fucking lit. Well, I think we're going to sign it off. I think it's our longest pod, one of our longest pods for sure. Absolutely amazing. Deacon, thank you again for coming on. Oh, Appreciate no, your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, of course. Dude, thank you, man. This podcast was awesome. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, you know, there's, there's many, many ins and outs. I'm sure we do a part two later on in life, but. Okay. It was dope. It was a great time. Thank you. Don't want to take it too much more of your life. Thank you all. You all out there as well. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time as well. Like, comment, subscribe, share. All that fun stuff. Catch us in for the next episodes. Coming out soon. More everything dropping. More life. More love. Follow Deacon. Follow us. Have a great rest of your life. And that's the bottom line. Because MJ38 said so. That's it. DMC on the flip. Peace. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light show Really ain't no telling where we might